Anthem sung by Gordon McRae. And this 1969 baseball season is about to get underway. We'll be back with the start of today's game in just one minute. Now here's a catchy idea from R.C. Cola, the comer. Royal Crown Cola presents Pamela Austin, a rising star, a real comer. Escape. Come on over to Royal Crown Cola. It's the match. Mad, mad, mad cola. R.C., the one with the mad, mad taste. Pamela Austin, a fresh new face in show business, a real comer. Now meet another comer, R.C. It's moving up fast in popularity, catching on everywhere. Get with the comer. Get with R.C. Better shake the cola drag. Check the one that's really mad. It's the mad. Mad, mad, mad cola, R.C., the one with the mad, mad taste, R.C. The Comer. Well, here at Shea Stadium, the first ball has been thrown out by the Honorable Mayor of Montreal, Jean Drapeau. Throw made perfectly to Jerry Crody, the starting catcher for the New York Mets. Umpires are now at home plate. Gene Mock and Gil Hodges there going over the ground rule. And let's take a look at the score of the starting lineup. For the Montreal Expos, the leadoff batter will be the shortstop, Maury Will. Batting second, playing second base, Gary Sutherland. Batting third in right field, Rusty Staub. Batting fourth and playing left field, Mac Jones. Batting fifth at first base, Bob Bailey. Batting sixth and catching, John Bateman. Batting seventh, playing third base, Coco LaBoy. Batting eighth and playing center field, Don Hahn. And the starting pitcher for the Expos, Jim Mudcat Grant. For the New York Mets, the leadoff batter will be Tommy Agee, playing center field. Batting second and playing right field, Rod Gaspar. Batting third and playing second base, Ken Boswell. Batting fourth, playing left field, Cleon Jones. Batting fifth at third base, Ed Charles, batting sixth and playing first base, Ed Cranepool, batting seventh and catching Jerry Grody, batting eighth, playing shortstop, Bud Harrelson, and the pitcher for the Mets, Tom Seaver. For both these teams, the first game of the season, there has been some action in the National League taking place yesterday. The Dodgers defeated Cincinnati 3-2, to two. Atlanta beat San Francisco 5-4. to four. In the American League, the Yankees defeated Washington 8 to 4. So the rest of the league getting underway here on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. This broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of Rheingold Breweries Incorporated and is authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. Well, the New York Mets finished their spring training season with a record of 14 wins and 10 losses. Having a very fine spring, led by the tremendous hitting of Cleon Jones. The Montreal Expos 
had a record of 13 wins and 10 losses with their spring training taking place at West Palm Beach, Florida. Now the New York Mets are taking the field for the first time this year. Field condition here at Shea Stadium. The infield is very good. The outfield is very slow. Fly balls to the outfield undoubtedly will plug most of the time. Ball will roll very, very shortly. Field dimensions 341 down the left field line, 341 down the right field line. 410 in center field, 371 in the alley, both in left and right center. Very little breeze here at Shea Stadium. A perfect day for opening day. Tom Seaver taking his warm up pitches. The umpires for the game today will be Tom Gorman behind home plate, Stan Landis at first base, Bill Williams at second base, and Nick Colossi will be the umpire at third. The National League schedule today shows Philadelphia at Chicago, Pittsburgh at St. Louis, San Francisco at Atlanta, and Houston out in San Diego, California. In the American League, Boston at Baltimore are scheduled pitches for that game. For Boston, Jim Lomborg and Dave McAnally going for the Orioles. At the end of one and a half innings, Cleveland two, Detroit nothing. Louis Tian pitching for the Indians against Denny McLean for the Tigers. Larry Brown a home run in the first with no one on. Minnesota scheduled at Kansas City. Seattle scheduled against the Angels in California for a night game. And the White Sox are scheduled for a night game against the Oakland Ball Club. So Major League Baseball starting an unprecedented season with divisional play in both major leagues, the Western and Eastern divisions. And the winners of each division will have a three out of five playoff to determine who will meet in the World Series at the end of the baseball season. Right now, the leadoff batter for the Montreal Expos stepping up to the batter's box and here now for the play-by-play, -play, Bob Murphy. All right, Ralph, thank you very much and hi, everybody. And here we go on a beautiful day in New York. Mario Wells, the all-time base-feeling champion of baseball, will lead off against Tom Seaver, the most brilliant young right-hander from Fresno, California, as he starts his third year in the major leagues. Mario switch hitter will be batting left against Tom Seaver. Gary Sutherland on deck and then Rusty Stop. Here's the first pitch of the new season and a foul ball back, no play. For the New York Mets, defensively, Eddie Crane Pool is at first. Ken Boswell playing second. Bud Harrelson is short. And in on the grass at third against Maury Wills at third base, Ed Charles. Now Seaver winding. And the pitch on the way, a swing and a miss for two. Leon Jones in left field. Tommy Agee in center and rookie Rod Gaspar is around and right. Tom Seaver on the mound and Jerry Grody behind the plate. The two strike delivery is hit late and foul over the visiting dugout going out of play. Peanuts Lowry coaching at third base. Bob Oldis on the lines at first. The Mets are playing the outfield straight away against Maury Wills. Now the pitch by Seaver is swung on. He just got a piece of it, a foul ball going out of play. Last year with the Pirates, Maury had a good year. He batted 276. Now Grody setting up the target. Here's the pitch thrown, a fastball that's high, one ball and two strikes. What a beautiful, beautiful day for the opening of the season. Good crowd on hand, crowd of up around 45,000 people. Now Seaver is siding in, and the pitch thrown, a curve just a little bit low. Seaver changed up on his curveball. He made a beautiful pitch, and he had just missed. The batter is Maury Wells. He's a take charge player. And a ground ball bounced foul down the third, taken on a backhand play by Ed Charles. Last year, Amari Wills stole 52 bases and hit 278. He is a very difficult man to fend. Usually makes contact. The 2-2 delivery is high, ball three. And by fouling off three pitches, Wills now has worked the count to three and two. Wills first came up to the Dodgers in 1958. 
10-year veteran. The 3-2 delivery, straight three call. Beautiful pitch by Tom Suber and Wills is caught looking. One out and nobody on. It brings up Gary Sutherland. Gary played for manager Gene Mock with the Phillies last season. He was a utility infielder. He was in 67 ball games, and he batted 275. In the earlier days of the New York Mets, they had Gary's older brother as a pitcher, Darrell Sutherland. Gary, a right-hand hitter, and a hard slider taken outside. One ball and no strike. We are honored to have the chief executive of Montreal, Mayor John Ruffo, here today, along with a large delegation of Montreal fans. The 1-0 delivery, a foul ball back into the screen. One ball, one strike. Rusty Staub, the on-deck batter, and then Mac Jones. The Montreal lineup has quite a bit of power. Rusty Staub, Mac Jones, Bob Bailey, and John Bateman, all four of those men, have home run type power. The 1-1 delivery is inside at the knees, two balls and a strike. So the big week of baseball is underway at beautiful Shea Stadium. Three games with Montreal and three this weekend against St. Louis. Seaver with a 2-1 delivery. Ground ball hit hard on the right side of the diamond and it's bobbled by Boswell and goes into right field. Gary Sutherland is on. Boswell running toward the hole on the right side of the infield got his glove on it but was unable to hold it and the ball went into right field and we'll wait for the official scoring. It will be an error charge to Kenny Boswell. Now Rusty Staub coming up. Here is one of the outstanding hitters in baseball. Last year Rusty hit 291. He had 172 base hits with Houston. Rusty drove 72 runs in. Rusty Staub from New Orleans Louisiana. And he pops the first pitch up on the left side of the diamond. Ed Charles says, I've got it, and on the rim of the outfield grass, takes it for the out. Batting in the fourth position. Now there are two away, and the cleanup batter, Mac Jones, will be coming up. With Cincinnati last year, Jones hit 252. He had 10 home runs and 34 runs batted in. He was a part time outfielder with Cincinnati last year after being acquired by the Reds from the Atlanta Braves. He's a strong left-hand hitter. He can be pitched to, but if you make a mistake, he can hit it out of the ballpark. Now, a throw to first, not in time. The game time temperature on opening day, 66 degrees. And the pitch on the way, a swing and a foul ball hit back toward the New York Mets dugout. Former Mayor Bob Wagner has checked into the stadium and taken his seat to watch the opening day game. And that's official family is all on hand. Let's have the outfield at rather deep and around to right, figuring Jones as a full hitter. And Seaver's pitch is inside of the knees. One ball and one strike. Montreal managed by Gene Mock. His pitching coach is Cal McClish, former 20-game winner in the American League. His coaches on the baselines, veteran Harry Peanuts Lowry and Bob Oldis, a former catcher. Now the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Good fastball by Tom Fever. He moved that one. And it's one ball and two strikes. The Mets finishing an excellent spring training. They won 14. They lost 10. They had three games rained out. They closed out their exhibition schedule in New Orleans on Sunday, beating Minnesota. And the pitch to Jones is taken high. It's two balls and two strikes. In tomorrow's game, Jim McAndrew will be on the mound for New York, and his opponent will be the former Chicago Cub young right-hander, Bill Stoneman. Rookie Gary Gentry will pitch the final game of the series. Changeup hit foul, going over toward the Expos dugout. The Montreal Expos were greeted in Montreal yesterday by a fantastic parade and crowd. The crowd that was estimated by the police officials to be over 200,000 turning out to greet the new Montreal Expos. 
Now the 2-2 delivery. Foul ball back over the screen. No play. The Mets will visit Montreal on the 30th of April. They will go to Montreal for a three-game series on the 29th, the 30th, and the first day of May. Now Seaver throws to first, not in time. The base runner is Jerry Sutherland. He reached on an error, turns to Ken Boswell. The outfield deep and around to right. The 2-2 delivery inside and low, it's ball three. And for the second time here in the top half of the first inning, Tom Seaver has gone three and two on the hitter. The batter is Mac Jones. He was the number two choice of the Montreal Expos in the National League expansion draft. The runner goes on three and two at a foul ball back into the screen. No play. Jones had big years in 1965 and 66. In those two years, he had a combined home run total of 54. Now Sutherland takes the lead off first base. He's running on three and two, and a foul ball again hit back over the screen and back into the crowd. Gary Sutherland on first base. We're just underway here at Jay Stadium. Tom Seaver on the mound for New York. Two men down, and the batter with a count of three and two is Mac Jones. Eddie Crane pulled holding against the runner, and Sutherland will be going on the pitch. There he goes. Here's the pitch. Foul to hit deep down the left field line and back up into the crowd. Well, Mario Wills and Mac Jones have both given Tom Seaver a hard time of it here at the start of the ball game. Wills fouled off about four pitches before he was called out on strike. Bud Harrelson shaded towards second and back deep against Mac Jones. The runner goes on three and two, and the pitch inside, ball four. A walk to Mac Jones, and the Expos have runners on first and second. Nobody out, and the hitter coming up now is Bob Bailey. Beetle Bailey, the former Dodger and Pirate slugger. He batted only 227 with the Dodgers last year, but he hit very well at the end of the season. He had eight home runs and 39 runs batted in. Bailey is a right-hand batter, and you have to be careful with him because he is strong. The pitch by Seaver is lying toward the gap and right center field for a base hit by Bob Bailey. Around third and coming in to score is Gary Sutherland. Rounding third is George and heading home. He will score. The ball goes over the head of Gary Grody. Rounding third is Bailey, and now he holds up. And the Expos lead two to nothing. Boswell's relay throw was a high throw that went over the head of Jerry Grody. It probably will be scored as a double and two runs batted in. The runs will be unearned as a result of an error charged to Ken Boswell that enabled Gary Sutherland to reach base. Bailey hit the ball hard, a line drive into right center field, driving two runs off. It will be a double and an error will be charged, I believe, on the relay throw made by Boswell. For Ken, it will be his second error of the inning. And now the hitter is Johnny Bateman, the catcher. The Expos lead 2 0. Johnny Bateman hit 249 with the Astros last year. He was in 111 ball games. Here's the pitch by Seaver, and the slider is outside, ball one. Now the pitch on the way of swing and a miss by Bateman. One ball, one strike. It has scored a double to right center for Bob Bailey. Two runs batted in, scoring Sutherland and Jones. And an error is charged to Boswell, who made the high throw over Grody's head, which enabled Jones or Bailey to go to third base. Now the pitch on the way, and it's popped up into short right field. Boswell goes out and makes the catch to side his up. Two runs, one hit, 
two errors, both charged to Boswell, and one man left on. And the score in the middle of the first inning, the Expos two, and the Mets coming to bat. Here's one for you. Can you ever have more than one winner in the same game? Well, you bet you can. And it's happening every day at Sitco. The name of the game is Be a Winner. And people everywhere are playing and winning. Pat Cefeli of East Orange, New Jersey won $100. You want to play? Then get your free game card at any Sitco dealer displaying the Be a Winner sign. Every card you get is a possible winner. Each card is worth five, ten, twenty-five, or one hundred dollars. To win, just find the three goes. There are at least three on every card. And be sure to save the tops of your game cards. They're winners too. There's a grand prize of twenty-five hundred dollars, and you can win it by spelling a nice place to visit. So come on to Sitco, where you can be a winner. Something else that makes Sitco a nice place to visit. Nothing to buy, void where prohibited. License drivers only. Tommy Avery will be leading off against right hander Mudcat Grant. Mudcat, a former 20 game winner and World Series star with the Minnesota Twins. He had a fine earned run average with the Los Angeles Dodgers last year. It was 2.08. He won six and he lost four. And Gene Mock has predicted that Mudcat Grant will be the biggest winner of any expansion club in history. Tommy Agee will lead off and the Mets start the last of the first inning two runs down. Montreal scoring two unearned runs driven home by Bob Bailey's double to right center. And the pitch is outside and low ball one. Tommy Agee coming off of a good spring training. For the spring training session, Tommy Agee hit 333. <laughs> and a pitch on the outside corner for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Johnny Bateman behind the plate. Mudcat's delivery, a ground ball, it toward the middle, over second, into center field, a base hit for Tommy Agee. And Agee gets the Mets off on a good foot as he singles to center. And now it brings up rookie Rod Gaspar. Rod made the Mets with a tremendous spring training. Rod from Long Beach, California. Has played a year and a half. Last year was his first full year in pro ball. And he hit 309 playing with Memphis. Very fine young man. He's a switch hitter and he uses an open batting stance. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside ball one. Defensively the Expos are playing Bob Bailey at first. Gary Sutherland is at second. Mari Wells the shortstop and Jose LaBoy is at third. Mac Jones in left, rookie Don Hahn in center, Rusty Staub in right. The runner goes, and a line drive that is caught by Maury Wells. He throws to first place, double play. Well, that's hitting into tough luck. The Mets were playing hit and run. Had the hit and run play not been on, that would have been a base hit for Rod Gaspar. He hit a line drive toward the middle. But Wells had broken to cover second on the hit and run play and was able to catch the line drive. Then threw across the diamond to first base, doubling up Tommy Agent. Now the hitter is Kenny Boswell. Boswell hit 286 during the spring. First pitch to him is taken for a strike. Now the windup pitch by Mudcat, a line drive, hit in the air to right field, a base hit. Taken on one hop by Rusty Staub, and Boswell is on with a long single into right field. Right here, as Theon Jones comes up, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is the big city's Nashville sound, WJRZ Hackensack, 97 on your dial.
Bob Murphy with Ralph Kainer and Lindsey Nelson from Shea Stadium on opening day. It's the last of the first inning, and the Expos lead the Mets by a score of two to nothing. Boswell on first, and the pitch to Cleon is a strike on the outside corner. Leon led the ball club throughout spring training and hitting. Last year he hit 297. Here's the pitch on the way. A line drive hits sharply up the middle of base hit. Boswell around second on his way to third. There'll be no play, and the Mets have runners at first and third. Third hit, and it brings up Ed Charles. Well, except for the line shot hit by Gaspar into a double play, the Mets could have four hits in a row going. That's for playing hit and run, and as a result, Wills broke towards second and was in a position to catch the liner. Runners on first and third, two men down. The Mets trail 2-0, and the hitter is Ed Charles. Mudcat delivers, and a breaking ball at the knees. Strike one call. Ed Charles coming off of a good year with the New York Mets. Last year he had 276. It's outside and low, one ball and one strike. And the glider, Ed Charles, hit 350 against left hand pitching. Now Jim Mudcat Grant looks in to get his sign from Johnny Bateman. The Mets trailing two to nothing have runners on first and third, two men down. The 1 1 delivery and a little squibbler out in front of the plate picked up by Bateman. He throws to first in time, and the side is out. No runs, three hits, no errors, and two left on. At the end of one inning, the Montreal Expos two, and the New York Mets nothing. For New York Mets baseball fans living in the Bronx, there is daily bus service to and from Shea Stadium before and after every home game. There are buses leaving one hour before each game from Fordham Road and Webster Avenue. Buses from the Bronx also leave 45 minutes before each game from Parkchester at the Hugh J. Grant Circle. This service is in addition to the regular express buses, which leave two hours and one hour before each game from the George Washington Bridge bus station, Flatbush and Nostrand Avenues in Brooklyn, and Bay Street and Borough Place in Staten Island. All buses return from Shea Stadium to their starting points up to 20 minutes after each game. In the National League today, the Phillies are playing at Chicago, and the Phillies are pitching Chris Short against the Cubs, Ferguson Jenkins. Pittsburgh and St. Louis play tonight in St. Louis. The Giants and the Braves play again tonight in Atlanta. The Braves beat the Giants last night by a score of five to four. They pulled that game out, winning it in the last of the ninth inning. Houston plays tonight at San Diego. Jose LaBoy, right-hand batter, takes a strike call on the inside corner. By the way, in the Houston-San Diego game tonight, the opening game pitcher for San Diego will be Dick Selma. Here's the pitch by Seaver and a breaking ball outside, one ball one strike. Boston playing at Baltimore for the Red Sox. It will be Jim Lonborg for the Orioles. Their big winner of last season, Dave McNally. Inside and the count goes two and one to Jose LaBoy. He had 100 RBIs playing for the Tulsa Oilers in the Pacific Coast League last year in the St. Louis Cardinal system. Now Seaver's 2-1 delivery is a strike, a slider on the outside corner. It's two and two. Cleveland two, Detroit two at the end of three. Luis Tian against Denny McLean. A home run for Cleveland by Larry Brown in the first inning. High pop foul that might be playable. Jerry Grody gets rid of the mask. He has room. He's under it and takes it. One away, Jose LaBoy retired. It will bring up the number eight hitter, rookie center fielder, Don Hahn. Don Hahn was plucked out of the San Francisco Giant organization in the expansion draft by Montreal. 
20 year old ball hawk who has tremendous speed. He's making quite a jump. He played in Fresno, California last year. Right hand batter and the pitch a strike on the outside corner. Minnesota at Kansas City today, Seattle at California tonight, and Chicago plays at Oakland tonight. Now the pitch by Seaver on the outside corner, strike two. The Expos lead 2 0. They scored two unearned runs in the opening inning. The runs were driven in by Bob Bailey with a well hit line drive double to right center. Curve just outside and low, one ball, two strikes. The one two delivery by Seaver, he jammed him and it's foul back into the crowd, no play. One-two pitch and a hard slider misses outside. The count is two and two. Tom Seaver gave up only one hit in the first inning, but it was the double by Bailey that drove the two runs in. Tommy Agee playing a stride to right center against the hitter Don Hanna. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a fastball. For Tom Seaver, his second strikeout. Now it brings up Mudcat Grant, and Mudcat is a very good hitter for a pitcher. Mudcat batting right-handed. Now the windup by Seaver. Here's the pitch on the way. A foul ball hit back over the screen. No play. Beautiful day for the opening day of the baseball season. Gil Hodges was feeling a great deal better today. Gill is in uniform and running the ball club. Gill had a bad cold that he caught in New Orleans over the weekend and all that rain. Curve is in the dirt out in front of home plate. One ball, one strike. Now Grody setting up the low target. The one-one pitch, a beautiful pitch, knee high for a strike. It's one and two. Left hit Mudcat Grant hard in the bottom half of the first inning. They had three hits, but as the result of a double play, failed to score. And a curve hit in the air to center field. Lazy fly ball. Tommy Agee under it. He makes the catch, and the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. At the end of an inning and a half, the Montreal Expos two, and the New York Mets nothing. Now here's a word from HFC. Never borrow money, needlessly, but when you need to borrow, trust HFC. You've decided you need to borrow. Now you're wondering where. Well, one company alone, Household Finance, has been helping families for 91 years. One company alone, Household Finance, is trusted by over 2.5 million people every year. One company alone advises you to never borrow money needlessly. Why not choose that one company, Household Finance? Never borrow money needlessly, but when you need to borrow, trust HFC. That's Household Finance. There are over 1,500 HFC offices in the U.S. and Canada. See your phone book for the address of the office nearest you. Mudcat Grant in the last half of the second. Eddie put together a very solid spring training. Looks like he might be able to get off to a good start. Breaking ball outside, it's ball one. Tom Gorman umpiring behind the plate with Stan Landis, Billy Williams, and Nick Colossi on the bases. For the Mets, Yogi Berra coaching at first base, and Eddie Yost is on the lines at third. Inside and low, Crane Pool takes, and the count goes to two balls and no strike.
Jerry Grody kneeling on deck, working with a pine tar cloth on that bat handle. Low, it's ball three. And Mudcat falls behind on Crane Pool, three and nothing. So Eddie steps out of the batter's box now to check with Eddie Yost, the third base coach, to see whether Gill wants to give him the green light on this pitch. That's two runs behind. The 3 0 delivery. It's over for a strike on the outside corner, three and one. The opening of the season, the four Montreal starters, after going through the spring training grind. 3 1 delivery, a ground ball hit toward the middle, base hit for Eddie Crane here. Charging the ball hard is Don Hahn, and he plays it back to the infield. And that is the fourth hit. Mets had three singles in the first inning without scoring. He will bring up Jerry Grody. The four Montreal starters, Mudcat Grant pitching the opening game today, Bill Stoneman pitches tomorrow, Larry Jaster on Thursday, and the fourth starter is Carl Morton, who last year played in the Texas League at Shreveport. Now Bailey will hold against the runner, and the pitch to Grody is high, ball one. Lively crowd here at Shea on opening day. We have quite a few banners around the stadium. Always a welcome sight. And the pitch is into the knees for a strike. One ball, one strike. Montreal with the infield a double played up. The outfield a step to the opposite field against Grody. And Jerry swings and misses. One ball, two strikes. Bud Harrelson is the on-deck hitter, and then Tom Seaver. The latest addition to the Montreal Ball Club is Bobby Wine, formerly with Philadelphia. Wine drives the left field, a base hit by Jerry Grody. Turning his second to screen pool, he will hold there, and the Mets have back-to-back -back base hits. Now Bailey takes time and goes to the mound to talk to Mudcat Grant. Bud Harrelson coming up with runners on first and second, nobody out. The Mets trailing by a score of two to nothing. On opening day, we want to be sure and send along a big cheery hello and welcome to all of our member stations on our New York Mets baseball network. We hope it'll be a long and pleasant summer for you. A summer with a lot of excitement. This appears to be, by all odds, the best ball club the Mets have ever come north with. They look for the bunt, and Harrelson takes the pitch for a strike on the outside corner. We want to welcome the listeners of WNLK in Norwalk, Connecticut. WDRN-FM in Norwalk. WBMI-FM in Meriden, Connecticut. WIK. KLFM in Newton, New Jersey. Here's the pitch by Grant. Outside and high to Bud Harrelson. One ball, one strike. We're going to get warm up action now in the Montreal bullpen. Jerry Robertson, a right hander up from Tulsa, is starting to warm up. Here's the pitch on the way to Harrelson. He holds up on his swing and takes inside and low. It's two and one. Dan McGinn, a left-hander, drafted out of the Cincinnati organization. He pitched at Asheville last year. He's also warming up for Montreal. The Mets have now reached Mudcat Grant for a total of five hits. Where in the last of the second, the Expos lead two nothing. It's low, ball three, three and one. Mudcat Grant behind on the count to Bud Harrelson, three and one. Runners on first and second, nobody out. Here's the pitch on the way. Ball four, the bases are loaded.
And Gene Mock is coming out of the dugout. Tom Seaver will be coming up with the bases loaded, nobody out. Johnny Bateman is on the mound talking with his pitcher, Mudcat Grant. And manager Gene Mock is walking to the mound. He has a left-hander and a right-hander on call in his bullpen. We are happy to say hello to the Mets fans listening on WOKO in Albany, New York. WKAJFM in Saratoga Springs, New York. WIZR in Johnston, New York. WIZRFM also in Johnston, New York. WELV in Ellenville, New York. WPORFM Portland, Maine. WDOS in Oneonta, New York. WHCU in Ithaca and WINR in Binghamton. Delighted to have you with us. Here's the pitch to Tom Seaver. Low and outside. Ball one. The base is loaded. Nobody out. Montreal has the infield at double play up. Now the windup by Grant. Here's his pitch. Fastball over a strike. It's one and one. Tommy Agee is the on deck batter, and then Rod Gaspar. Montreal tallied twice in the first inning on a walk, an infield error, and a double by Bob Bailey. Now the 1 1 pitch. A breaking ball for a strike. 1 and 2. Ed Cranepool, the lead runner on third. Jerry Grody is on second. Bud Harrelson on first. Here's the pitch. Low and outside. Two and two to Tom Seaver. Dan McGinn, a left-hander. Jerry Robertson, a right-hander. Both young pitchers are loosening up in the Montreal bullpen. The 2-2 delivery by Grant. Strike three called. A fastball at the outside corner. Mudcat getting his first strikeout, and it brings up Tommy Agee. Tommy single to center field in the first inning. Was erased in a double play. The Mets actually were playing hit and run. And Gaspar hit a line drive toward the middle of the diamond. And a fly ball well hit the left center field. Racing back is Han. It may go over his head. It does. A base hit the deep left center. Painful scores. Brody scores. Here's Harrison heading home. He scores. Johnny Agee clears the bases. And that's three on the Expos, too. Agee hitting a long double over the head of center fielder Don Hahn in left center field. Scoring Ed Strangel, Jerry Grody, and Bud Harrelson. And this is going to be all for Jim Mudcat Grant. Manager Gene Mock is going to the mound, and he signals for the left-hander, Dan McGinn. Dan McGinn, a left-hander out of the Cincinnati organization, won six and lost three at Asheville last season. He is a native of Omaha, Nebraska. He's a six-footer who weighs 200 pounds. So while the pitching change is being made and McGinn comes in to replace starter Mudcat Grant and with the Mets leading by a score of three and two. Let's see how the other games are going in the major leagues and let's check with Ralph Kiner. Philadelphia Phillies scored a run in the top half of the first inning off Ferguson Jenkins the starting pitcher for the Chicago Cubs and now Chicago coming up for their first time at bat this year against Chris Short the starting pitcher for the Phillies. It's Philadelphia one. Chicago batting in the bottom half of the first. On the schedule, Pittsburgh against the St. Louis Cardinals, the night ball game. San Francisco Giants against the Atlanta Braves in a night ball game. And Houston against San Diego, also under the light. In the American League at the end of two, Boston one, Baltimore nothing. Jim Lomborg pitching for the Red Sox, Dave McNally going for the Orioles. At the end of four, Detroit two, Cleveland two, Louis Tion pitching for the Indians. Danny McLean going for the Tigers. Larry Brown a home run in the first with no one on. Minnesota scheduled against Kansas City for a day game and then two other games scheduled for nighttime. Seattle at California and Chicago playing at Oakland. Right here the Mets have taken the lead by scoring three runs in the bottom of the second. 
They lead now by a score of three to two. Gene Mock has made two trips to the mound already this year. And he might be on his way to setting an all-time record for trips to the pitcher's mound. It's a beautiful day for baseball and the Mets with a tremendous crowd. On this opening day of the 1969 season and the first time in the history of the major leagues that we have had international play. The United States and Canada. And now once again for the play by play Bob Murphy. All right Ralph Dan McGinn is the new pitcher for the Montreal Expos. Dan McGinn a native of Omaha Nebraska is a graduate of Notre Dame. He's a strikeout artist last year at the Southern Association. He had 133 strikeouts and only 110 innings. And when Cincinnati brought him up for a brief look at the tail end of last year he struck out 16 men in 12 innings in the major league. Well it's a wonderful start for Tommy Agee. Rod Gaspar is the batter as McGinn takes over a ground ball hit foul down the third baseline. Gaspar a switch hitter is batting right against Dan McGinn. On the ball club they call Rod Gaspar contact. Because he has that happy facility for getting the bat on the ball. He puts it in play as they say and when the ball is in play you have a chance. Now Tommy Agee asked the umpire Billy Williams to move over and Agee may get picked off the throw to second and he's out by a mile. Now Tommy Agee got a little over anxious and got too far off. He had just moved the umpire Billy Williams so he could get a better look at the pitcher. And it may have bothered him just a bit because he got too far off in doing so and he's picked off. Now McGinn's pitch goes all the way to the backstop. One ball, one strike. Two outs, nobody on. Three runs are in. The Mets three and the Expos two were in the last half of the second. Gaspar hit a line drive into a double play. His first time up. It was on a hit and run play. It's taken high. Two balls and a strike. Gill experimented with Gaspar on the hit and run a great deal during spring training and Gaspar did an excellent job. That's why he has him batting second in the order and a ground ball hit hard toward the middle a base hit by Rod Gaspar. Gaspar with his first major league base hit a ground single hit right up the middle and that by the way is the seventh base hit for the Mets. It brings up Kenny Boswell. Boswell single to right his first time up. A day game tomorrow between the Mets and the Expos and Jim McAndrew pitches tomorrow for New York. His opponent will be Bill Stoneman. Now Bailey will hold against the runner the pitch to Boswell a wild pitch bouncing over toward the Mets dugout and it goes into the dugout. Gaspar who had rounded second and started for third will be sent back to second because the ball did go down into the dugout and the rule is that off the mound one base. And the wild pitch Gaspar goes into scoring position. One ball and no strikes to Kenny Boswell. And Gil Hodges has assigned Boswell the number three spot in the batting order. Here's the pitch on the way. And it gets the inside corner at the knees for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Number three spot in the batting order is usually reserved for the fellow you figure is going to have the highest batting average. The 1 1 delivery and a breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike one and two. Opening day at Big Shea Stadium as the Mets meet the Montreal Expos. And the one two pitch way outside the count is even two and two. The National League's other expansion club San Diego plays tonight at home against Houston. And ex Met Dick Selma will be on the mound for San Diego against Don Wilson of the Houston Astros. Two right handers who throw the ball very hard. Begins two two delivery line drive hit hard down the right field line foul. 
He missed an extra base hit by less than a yard. A long line drive down the right field line. It was ripped by Ken Boswell. Oh, Kenny Boswell just missed an RBI and an extra base hit. Foul by less than a yard, well down the right field line. Rusty Staub is playing right field for the Expos. They have a rookie, Don Hahn, in center field, and a veteran, Mac Jones, playing left field. The 2 2 pitch. Ground ball hit slowly on the right side of the diamond. Sutherland comes up with it, throws to Bailey in time, and the side is out. But the Mets grab the lead as they send seven men to the plate. Three runs came in. On four hits, no errors, one left on. At the end of two innings, it's the New York Mets three and the Montreal Expos two. What's the most exciting play in baseball? A stolen base, a double play around the horn, a perfect drag bunt. Well, no matter which play is your particular favorite, there's one thing they all have in common, perfect timing. And it's that same kind of perfect timing that makes Rhine Gold Extra Dry such a great beer. The timing of our skillful brewmasters as they brew into Rhine Gold the finest malt, the choicest imported in domestic hops. The perfect timing used to age Rhine Gold beer to perfection. The timing that gives you a beer with a head that stays firm and proud. A head that stands the test of time. The proud Rhine Gold 10 minute head. The sign of a truly great beer. Haven't you timed it yet? Rhine Gold Breweries, New York and Orange, New Jersey. Right here, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're tuned to the sound of Nashville, where modern music and the Mets are heard. WJRZ Hackensack, 97 on the dial. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kainer. It's the third inning at Shea Stadium. Stepping up, Maury Wills for the Montreal Expos. And up to follow the action for you, Ralph Kainer. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hi, everyone. Maury Wills struck out. He got caught looking at a 3-2 pitch his first time up. Tom Seaver on the mound and the first pitch by Tom. The Wills here in the top of the third, a call strike. Wills batting in the leadoff position for the Expos. Now the pitch back to the plate by Seaver. Hit hard down by Ed Crane pulled down the right field line. It'll go for at least two. Wills rounds at first base, hustles in the second with a stand-up double. So Maury Wills picks up his first hit of the 69 season. And the tying run is at second base with no one out here in the top of the third. And the batter coming up the second baseman for the Expos, Gary Sutherland. Gary was safe on an error his first time up and scored the first run of the ball game. Expos got two runs in the first. The Mets got three in the bottom half of the second. They lead three to two. A curveball tried by Seaver. It's blown away. So here's a reminder. There are still many types of season box and reserve seat plans available to suit the needs of both companies and individual fans. There's no better way to entertain your friends or clients in the day or evening at a Met game. Next delivery is taken over the outside corner, a slider catching one and one. All you have to do is contact our ticket manager now, and he'll be only too happy to arrange for an appointment. The number to call is area code 212-672-3000, 212-672-3000. Now the one-one delivery, curveball grounded out towards second base. Boswell over to pick it up. And he throws the first base as Wills goes to third. So the time run moves to 90 feet away. And it brings up Rusty Stop. Rusty saw one pitch his first time up and popped up to third. Let's have their infield back on the first base side. Infield in at third and short. Ernie Banks. Mr. Indestructible has just hit. Uh, big home run for the Cubs, and they now lead 3-1 after one. Free run home run by Ernie Beck. First pitch to Rusty Staub, swung on and fouled back. Out of play, strike one. Speaking of the ticket department, 
Got some great news, Bob Mann. And Bob Mann's wife, Norma, home and in great health after delivering a seven pound baby girl, Carolyn. Congratulations. One strike pitch outside a pickoff fly. Will slides back in and Grody decides not to throw. Will down the line quickly back to the bag and with a belly slide. Throw the pitch out. That's trying to take that runner off the base. They lead by one. Now Seaver ready to go and the 1-1 delivery. Low it inside. A slider missing. Two balls, one strike. Rusty Staub batted 291 last year. Now Seaver set. Here's the 2-1 delivery. It's hit out the left field. It's going to be a base hit. Cleon Jones comes in to field it and the time run comes in from third as Rusty Staub drives in his first run of the season. Maury Will scoring and it's a brand new ball game. Budcat Grant is off the hook. He was pitching a record on the losing side when he was knocked out of the box by the Mets in the second. That'll bring up Mac Jones playing left field. That's the first earned run given up by Tom Seaver. The other two were unearned. Mac Jones, a left-hand batter, and the first pitch a curve fouled off at strike one. Mac Jones worked out a walk his first time up on a 3-2 pitch after fouling off a few pitches. That set it up for him to score on a double by Bob Bailey. Montreal taking the lead with two in the first. The Mets scoring three in the bottom of the second to take the lead three to two, and now a tie game as Montreal has picked up one here in the third. Pitch back to the plate is high and inside. One ball, one strike. Now Seaver checking at first. Rusty stopped there. Here's the pitch. Curveball grounded foul. Bob Otis, the first base coach, picks up the ball. One ball, two strike count. One man out, top of the third. Mets have made arrangements this year for you fans to conveniently get your tickets, the actual tickets, at all 147 branches of the Manufacturers Hanover Trust Company. Previously, you made a reservation and then picked the ticket up at the ballpark, but now you can get the actual tickets right at all the branches of the Manufacturers Hanover Trust Company. Now a fastball that is inside right around the knees. It's ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Jerry Grody sending the signs out. Stop at first. Seaver checks him, comes back, and the 2-2 pitch is fouled away. Throw Mac Jones making Seaver work. Tom has given up three runs. One of them earned, allowed three hits. Mets have had three runs and seven hits. Now Seaver set, and again at 2-2, the pitch is taken this time. Curveball low and inside, and a full count, three balls and two strikes. Rusty Staub at first base is not fast. Mac Jones strikes out a lot, so we'll see whether or not the runner will be going. Seaver goes, the runner does not, and the pitch is lined by Eddie Cranepool down the right field line. Staub will make third with no trouble. He rounds second, goes there. Now, moving on down to second base is Mac Jones, and the Expos have runners at second and third on their fourth base hit, the third in this inning, and Jerry Grody goes out to the mound to talk with Tom Seaver. Batter coming up, Bob Bailey. Bailey doubled in, two runs his first time up. First baseman, Bob Bailey, number three. With runners at first and second and two men out, Bailey hit a double in the right center field to score two. Now the Mets bring their infield in. And they're going to put Bailey on. The first pitch is outside, ball one. Seaver sets up again. And the next pitch, ball two. Not too far outside. Bailey had a notion. On deck batter is John Bateman, the catcher. That's trying to set it up for a double play. Next pitch outside, ball three. And now ball four, and that loads up the bases. Catcher. 
Bateman popped up to second base his first time up. Mets dropping their infield back at short and second base for the double play. Cranepool even with a bag at first. Charles even with a bag at third. Outfield shaded toward right. And Seaver working with the score at 3-3 and the bases loaded. One man out. Top of the third. And Seaver's wind up and first pitch to Bateman. Curveball over the outside corner. A called strike. Bateman, right hand batter. Next pitch, fastball fouled off. Seaver had the fastball by him at strike two. Seaver working for the bases full. The score tied 3 3, one man out in the top of the third. The Mets against the Montreal Expos. Now the sign is out. And the two strike pitch. Fastball fouled away again. Bateman last year batted 249 for the Houston Astros. Two strike count. Once again, Seaver goes into the short windup and the pitch, a curveball, grounded foul past Phoenix Lowry, the third base coach, and Bateman stays alive. Rusty Staub back to third base. Mac Jones back to second. Bob Bailey back to first. And again, the two strike pitch. It is swung on and missed. Strike three. Big strikeout for Tom Seaver, his second out of the inning. And it brings up the third baseman, Coco LaBoy. Strikeout by Tom Seaver, his third in the ballgame. Don Cardwell is loosening up in the bullpen for the Mets. Mets have their infield back all the way around now with two men away and the first pitch is a curve. Swung on and missed. Strike one. A boy fouled out his first time up. Strong boy from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Batted 292 there last year. One strike pitch. Fastball popped up foul out of play. So Seaver with the bases loaded with a two strike count here. In the top of the third, the score tied 3 3, and the bases loaded. Now the signs are out, and Seaver back to the plate. Pitches high and inside. LaVoy has to back away under his chin. One ball, two strikes. Once again, Seaver into the windup and the one two pitch. Curveball grounded out in the hole, picked up by Harrelson. from the play at second base is in time, and the side is retired. Harrelson just got the ball to Boswell at second base in time as he went deep in the hole to field the ball after Ed Charles could not cut it off. In the inning, one run on three hits, no errors, and two men left on. And the score at the end of two and a half innings. Montreal three, the New York Mets three. And now the Avco Corporation brings you the one minute baseball quiz of the day. When the Mets ended the 1962 season with 120 games lost, it was only a poor second to another team that holds the record for the most games lost in a single year. You recall who that team was? While you're thinking about the answer, think about this too. If you're between 40 and 65, you're over three times more likely to become disabled than to die. That's why it's so important to protect yourself and your family with a non cancelable disability income replacement insurance policy with guaranteed legal premium. Avco's Paul Revere Life Insurance is number one in the field. So see your Avco Paul Revere man soon. Now about our question. When the Mets ended the 1962 season with 120 games lost, it was only a poor second to another team that holds the record for the most games lost in a single year. You recall who that team was? You're right if you said the old Cleveland National League team back in 1899. They lost a whopping 134 games. We'll be back again tomorrow with another baseball quiz brought to you by Avco. Leaders in aerospace, insurance, credit cards, motion pictures, broadcasting, farm equipment, and over a dozen other growing, expanding businesses.
We got a tie ball game going here at Shea Stadium, the first game of this 1969 season, and it has been a exciting ball game. 11 base hits, the score 3 3 as Cleon Jones comes up for the Mets. Dan McGinn is on the mound for the Montreal Expos, pitching to Cleon Jones for the first time. And the first pitch is a curveball in the call strike. Cleon singled the center field his first time up in the first inning off Jim Grant. Jim was knocked out after one and one third innings, charged with three runs and six base hits. Now a ground ball hit foul down the left field line. Strike two. It'll be Cleon Jones, Ed Charles, and Ed Cranepool for left-hander Dan McGinn. Now the signs are out. Bateman, the catcher for Montreal, and the pitch is a fastball outside. Fastball breaking away from the right-hand batter. One ball, two strikes. Don Cardwell continuing to throw in the bullpen for the Mets. Now the next pitch to Cleon again a fastball high and away two balls two strikes. No one out in the bottom half of the third. And at 2 2 the pitch to Cleon is popped in the air to center field high in the air and the center fielder Don Hahn is under the ball and he makes the catch. One away and it brings up Ed Charles. Say there is no two ways about it. No deposit, no return bottles are the easy way to enjoy the mad, mad taste of Royal Crown Cola. You don't go out of your way to return the bottle. Get with the comer, RC. Ed Charles. Top one out in front of the plate his first time up and was thrown out by the catcher John Bateman. He takes the first pitch this time, a called strike. Charles batted 350 against left hand pitching last year and the first time up this year against the left hander and the next pitch is fouled away on the first base side strike two. Charles last year an overall 276 average for the Mets. Two strike count. And the next pitch is taken in a fastball a called strike three and Dam again gets his first strike out. Now with two men out here the bottom half of the third the score tied at three three the batter will be Ed Cranepool. Ed started the Mets rally in the second when they scored three runs when he singled the center field. Montreal with two in the first, the Mets three in the second. Montreal tying the ball game with a run in the top of the third. First pitch is fouled off at strike one. Rainpool had a good spring. The best he's had in his seasons with the Mets. Next pitch again fouled back out of play strike two. Them again has been ahead of Cleon Jones Ed Charles and now Ed Cranepool with a two strike count in the setting. Signs are out and the pitch to Cranepool a left hand batter is just outside breaking ball one ball two strikes. At the end of two, the Cubs three, Philadelphia one. Ernie Banks with a three-run home run for Chicago. Chris Short and Ferguson Jenkins, the opposing pitchers. Now a wild swing and a miss and a pitch out of the strike zone up above the letters. Strike three, and Ed Cranepool is struck out. A one-two-three inning for Dan McGinn. And the score at the end of three. The New York Mets three, the Montreal Expos three. And now this song of importance from R.C. Cola. Royal Crown Cola presents Meredith McRae, a rising star, a real comer. Escape! Come over to Royal Crown Cola. It's a mad, 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 mad cola. The one with the mad, mad taste. Meredith.
Kenneth McRae, an exciting new recording and television star, a real comer. Now meet another comer, R.C. It's moving up fast in popularity, catching on all over the country. Get with the comer. Get with R.C. Better shake the color drag. Check the one that's really mad. It's a mad, mad, mad. The Comer. We're going to the top of the fourth inning, a 3-3 ball game. Montreal three runs on four hits. The Mets have three runs in seven, and the first batter for Tom Seaver will be the center fielder for the Expos, Don Hahn. And the first pitch is grounded out to Bud Harrelson, the shortstop. Bud comes up, throws over to first base, and on one pitch, Seaver has the first out of the fourth. Hahn had struck out his first time up. One of three strikeouts that Seaver has recorded here today in his start. And it brings up Dan McGinn, the pitcher. Dan, a left hand thrower, also a left hand batter. Met three, the Expos three. And the first pitch to McGinn. Is it deep to right field? It's way back there. Could go all the way. It is going, going. It is on top of the wall and over a home run. Dan McGinn with a home run that bounced on top of the fence and then over into home run territory and the Expos laid by a score of four to three. So McGinn gets his first major league home run as a pitcher here putting his own cause into the winning side at this point in the ball game with one man out in the top of the fourth. That brings up Maury Wills. Wills doubled his last time up. He's one for two in the game, and he takes the first pitch high. It's ball one. Fifth base hit given up by Tom Seaver. The Expos now leading four to three, and the pitch back to Wills is lying down the right field line into the corner. It'll go for extra bases. Gaspar cuts it off, fires it into the relay man. Ken Boswell and Maury Wills pulls up a second with his second stand-up double in the ball game. Wills two for three, and here comes Gil Hodges out of the dugout to talk with Tom Seaver. Don Cardwell had been warming up. He is now going back out to the bullpen to warm up again. Thirteen base hits. One man out here in the top of the fourth. Gil Hodges talking with Tom Seaver and Jerry Grody. At the pitcher's mound. At the end of three, Boston two, Baltimore one. Lee Stang has taken over for Jim Lomborg in the third. McNally, the starting pitcher for the Orioles, relieved by Leonard in the third. Belanger had a home run in the third with no one on for Baltimore. At the end of five and a half innings, Detroit four, Cleveland two. Louis Tian taken out in the sixth for Hamilton. Danny McLean still in the ball game for Detroit. Home runs by Larry Brown and Al Kaline. Kaline's home run coming in the fifth to break a 2-2 tie. Now of Gil Hodges, the manager of the Mets, back to the bench. Jerry Grody back to send out the signs, and Tom Seaver set to go. Batter is the second baseman, Gary Sutherland, right-hand batter, 0 for 2 in the game. Seaver checks Wills at second. Here's the pitch. Hit hard down to the shortstop. Taken there by Harrelson. He looks Wills back to second base. Fires the first in time for the out. So two assists for Bud Harrelson in the inning. And the Mets now will defense against Rusty Stobbs. Rusty singled the left field to drive in a run his last time up. He's one for two in the game. And they're going to put him on. The pitch is outside, ball one. Next batter scheduled up, Mac Jones, the left fielder. Now ball two. Two balls, no strikes.
And ball three. And ball four. The second intentional walk that the Mets have given the Expos in the game. They walked Bob Bailey in the third, and then that loaded up the bases. They picked up two outs without a run scoring. Maury Wills at second, Rusty Staub at first, the batter Mac Jones, the left-hand batter. Mac walked in the first, doubled down the right field line in the third. Perfect for the day, one for one in the walk. And Tom Seaver working with two men out here in the fourth. First pitch is swung on a miss, fastball above the letter, strike one. Jones with a close stand. Seaver set to go. Here's the delivery. And it's inside and high. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike. Seaver back again. And a curve is low and inside. Two balls, one strike. Seesaw ball game. Montreal got two in the first to lead. The Mets scored three in the second to lead. It was tied up in the third, and now Montreal in front with one here in the fourth. Next pitch it on the ground towards second base, taken there by Boswell. Covering at first base is Tom Seaver. The throw is perfect, and the side is retired. Eddie Greenville had broken away from his first base position, hoping to field the ball, and then couldn't get to it. So the play completed 4-1. In the inning, one run on the home run by... Dam again, the pitcher for the Expos. There were two hits, no errors, a walk, and two men left on base. And the score at the end of three and a half innings. The Expos four, the New York Mets three. Now here's a word from Sitgo. Now you can go, go, go to Sitgo and win up to $2,500 playing Be a Winner. Pick up a game card and rub off three flower petals on the card. If the word go appears three times, you win the value of the card. $1, $5, $25, or $100. And because every card has at least three goes on it, every card can be a winner. The luckier you are at guessing where the goes are, the more you can win. Best of all, you find out if you're a winner on the spot. And if your luck's really running high, you can also win the big prize of $2,500. Just save each game card you get until you spell out the words, a nice place to visit. If you're a licensed driver, you can play Be a Winner. For details and a game card, drive into your participating Sitco dealers now. It's a nice place to visit and win up to $2,500. Remember, this is the game where every card can be a winner. Nothing to buy, void where prohibited. For the second time in the ball game, the Mets are behind. This time it's the bottom of the fourth inning, and Jerry Grody to lead off for the Mets. Jerry single the left field his first time up. On the mound for Montreal. Dam again. Left hander in the first pitch is low and inside ball one. Again relieved Jim Grant in the second inning with one man out. Gave up a base hit to Rod Gaspar, but since then he has not given up another base hit. While striking out two. And the 1 0 pitch. Breaking ball too low, and it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Cardwell continues to throw in the bullpen. Seaver will be the third hitter scheduled up in the inning. Now a fastball over the inside corner. Two balls and one strike. Minnesota playing at Kansas City. And the starting pitchers for that game for Minnesota, Tom Hall. And for Kansas City, Wally Bunker. Two balls, one strike. Again back, and the pitch is just outside, ball three. Ernie Banks has hit his second home run for the Cubs at Wrigley Field against the Philadelphia Phillies. This one now coming in the third with one man on. Ernie has driven in five runs in the ball game, and the Cubs lead at least by a score of five to one. 3-1 pitch is high. It's ball four, and Jerry Grody walks. So the Mets have the time run going to first base with Bud Harrelson coming up. Bud walked in four pitches his first time up and later on scored a run on the double by Tommy Agee. Harrelson batting right-handed. 
No one out, bottom of the fourth inning. And the first pitch to Harrelson, the slider over the outside part of the plate, a called strike. Harrelson taking a long look at the signs from Eddie Ose, the third base coach, before getting back in the batter's box. One strike count. Stever in the on deck circle. Cardwell still throwing. And a swing and a miss. Strike two. Dan McGinn. In relief of Mudcat Grant working for the Expo. Two strike count. Again sets up, comes back again. The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike three. So that brings up Tom Seaver, and the strikeout might have kept him in the ball game because he is now coming up in what could be a bunting situation with one man out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's have the time run at first with Tommy Agee on deck. Strikeout the third for Dam again since coming in the ball game in the second with one man out. Montreal leading four to three for the bottom half of the fourth. Throw over to first base and Bailey almost got picked off and it looks like it's a box call. Gary Grody sent on down to second on a box call by the first base umpire Stan Landis. Throw to first base did not fool Gary Grody. He was going nowhere but it almost picked off Bob Bailey and he had to make a recovery to catch the ball. The move was so good it was too good and was called a block and here comes Gene Mockout to talk to Dam again with a time run at second here. This is Gene Mock's third trip to the mound today. Now Gene trots on back to the bench. The count one ball, no strikes. Seaver struck out his first time up. He was batting against Mudcat Grant. At the time he was batting with the bases loaded. Later on, the Mets got the three runners in. Now the next delivery, low and inside. Two balls, no strikes. Big crowd here at Shea today. Beautiful day for baseball. It's scheduled to be the same tomorrow. Next pitch low and away and it's ball three. Fastball missing, three balls, no strike. Bill Stoneman is scheduled to pitch for the Expos tomorrow. Jim McAndrew scheduled for the Mets. Three balls, no strike. And the pitch, a called strike one. Got baseball's number one fan out here today, as usual on opening day, Tut Shore. Here's the 3 1 pitch. Swung on and missed at strike two. So, Dan McGinn, back from a 3 0 count, working the count to three balls and two strikes. Tommy Agee, the on deck batter. And the 3 2 pitch. It is hit foul down the right field line out of the play. Seaver trying to protect the plate with a little short chop on that one, fouling the ball away. Mets have three games for the Expos in this series today, tomorrow, and Thursday. And then the St. Louis Cardinals, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday. Now once again the pitch back to Seaver and this one is outside. The scoreboard count was wrong and that runs the count to three and two. Todd saying that's ball four. But just before that pitch Tom Gorman the home plate umpire had signaled to the ball players the count was two balls and two strikes. Now ground ball hit right back to the mound taken by McGinn. He looks the runner back to second and Seaver is thrown out at first as Bailey makes the catch. Adam Miller, 
That keeps the tying run at second base. Gives the Expos their second out here in the bottom of the fourth and brings up Tommy Agee for the Mets. Tommy has two hits and two times up and he has driven in all three of the Mets runs. He doubled the left center field to drive in Ed Cranepool, Jerry Grody, and Bud Harrelson back in the second. Maury Wills with a brief discussion with the pitcher Dan McGinn before going back to his shortstop position. Now again sets, checks, and comes to the plate. And Agee takes high and away, ball one. Now time call for a moment as John Bateman walks out in front of home plate to say something. A walk, a buck, a strikeout, and a ground out. Mets with a runner at second. And a high slider that misses its ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Tommy Agee, the center fielder for the Mets. And the next delivery is swung on and missed. Fastball over the outside corner, about belt high, two and one. Shadows are extending now between home plate and the pitcher's mound, about halfway out. Two one pitch, high and ball three. Three balls, one strike. On deck batter for the Mets, their right fielder Rod Gaspar. Two men away, bottom half of the fourth inning. The Montreal Expos in their first major league game, leading by a 4-3 margin. Now the pitch, and it's inside, ball four. So the Mets have the tying run at second base, the go-ahead run at first with two men away, and it brings up Rod Gaspar, who has a base hit and two times up. Rod single to center field in the second. And John Bateman is now talking with rookie Dan McGinn. Working in relief of Mudcat Grant, the starting pitcher for the Expos. Cal McQuish is giving the sign to the bullpen to get some action going. Pitching coach for the Expos. First pitch to Gaspar inside a ball. Rod batted 309 in Memphis last year. Jerry Robertson and Don Shaw now listening up in the bullpen for the Expos. Pitch back to the plate is low and it's ball two. Two balls, no strike. Rod Gaspar was the first man that Dan again faced when he came in the ball game in the second. He picked Tommy Agee off second in that. Next pitch a call strike. Two balls, one strike. Gaspar then singled, went to second on a wild pitch, but was left there when Boswell grounded out. Two balls, one strike. Runners at first and second. Now the pitch. It has popped up in foul territory out of play. Ball over the dugout on third base side and a one hand grab by a fan down there. And he fell back over the railing. Didn't get hurt. Fine catch. We've got a lot of fans here. Around 40,000 or so. Maybe more. So they count even at two and two on Gaspar. Brought a switch hitter batting right handed. Again sets. Here's the pitch. It's hard, hard hit by the third baseman in the left field. This will tie up the ball game. Grody comes in to score. And it's a 4 4 game on Rod Gaspar's second base into the game. And that is his first major league run batted in. And we pause now for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. <laughs> 
Join the hit parade. Hear the Mets and the Nashville sound for the New York area on WJRZ Hackensack 97 on your dial. Ralph Kiner along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from Shea Stadium, the opening game of the year. And once again, a brand new ball game, a score four to four. Gaspar with a single off the glove of the third baseman, Jose LaBoy. And that brings up Ken Boswell, who has a base hit and two times up. Mets have the go-ahead run at second. Tommy Agee there. Here's the pitch. Curve ball low, and it's ball one. Mets have four runs, eight hits. Montreal, four runs and six. A 1-0 pitch to Boswell. It's outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Last year, Ken Boswell batted 261 for the Mets. Was out for a month with a broken finger. Also was out off and on with reserve duty. Now at 2-0, the pitch to the left-hand batter is in a call strike. Two balls, one strike. Damn again. Checking out the base runner. Good speed on the bases. And the pitch. Grounded foul. So the count evens at two balls and two strikes. Yogi Bear goes over to pick it up. Mets have Yogi Bear coaching at first base again this year. Eddie Oast. Again at third. High ball game, 4-4, two men out. Bottom of the fourth inning, the Mets with runners at first and second. And the 2-2 pitch to Boswell hit in the air out the shadow left center field. A long run, it could drop in. The left fielder, Matt Jones, can't get to it. Gaspar scores. A.G. scores from second base. Gaspar goes over to third, and the Mets have taken the lead 5-4. Texas Ligger that dropped in front of Mac Jones in left center field. And the Mets are leading 5-4 and once again Gene Mott comes out to the mound. And the sign has gone out. We're going to have a pitching change. Leon Jones is due up next for the Mets. So the right-hander is being called in the ball game, Jerry Robertson. And while he comes in from the bullpen, let's check out the scores with Bob Murphy. All right, Bob Murphy, Jerry Robertson, the new pitcher for the Expos. He's 6'2", 205 pounds, was a relief pitcher at Tulsa last year where he compiled a record of 4-2 and in 53 appearances. This is his first appearance in the major leagues and he is working with runners at first and third and Cleon Jones a batter two men out bottom half of the fourth. Cleon singled his first time up he's one for two in the game. And the right hander sets here's the pitch right over the top a fastball in a strike call. Jerry Robertson. Originally signed with the St. Louis Cardinals. A one strike pitch, a fastball line to right field, a base hit. It should go for two. Coming in the score from third is Rod Gaspar. Cleon going to second. Here comes Ken Boswell trying to score the slide, the tag, he's out. Ken Boswell on a perfect relief. Thrown out by the second baseman, taking the relay from the right fielder, Rusty Stobb. And Gary Sutherland's throw home was perfect to the plate, and they just nipped Ken Boswell trying to score. On the play, though, Cleon Jones doubled in a run. The Mets now leading by a score of 6-4 to in the inning. Two runs on three hits. No errors and one man left in the score at the end of four. The Mets six, the Montreal Expos four. And the opening day game here is Shea turning into a slugfest. The Mets leading 6-4. to four. And over the first four innings, 16 base hits. 
Now Fever out of his windup and the pitch to Bailey, a fastball, strike one call. Bob Bailey doubled to right center, driving two runs in and putting Montreal in front 2 0 in the first inning. Bailey's second time up, he drew an intentional walk. At a curve, the slow, one ball, one strike. Crowd today of about 46,000, a beautiful crowd on opening day at Shea. The game time temperature, a sunny 66 degrees. The 1 1 delivery, and Seaver's fastball is over a call strike, 1 and 2. Tom pitched the opening game last year for the New York Mets. A year ago, the Mets opened against the Giants on the West Coast at Candlestick Park. Now the 1 2 pitch, low outside, it's 2 and 2. Seaver pitched very well in the opening game. He did not figure in the decision. The Giants rallied, scoring three in the ninth inning to win it, and Danny Frisella, who relieved, was the losing pitcher. Pitching two and two. And a drive hit in the air to deep right. Back goes Gaspar. Back to the warning track. He's got it. Rod Gaspar retreating to the warning track to pull down the long drive hit by Bob Bailey. One out and nobody on. John Bateman coming up. Bateman. Pitch thrown, a curve is popped up in foul territory. Grody coming back, hoping for a play. The ball is going to land in the crowd. Again this year, the Mets will arrange fan club meetings, give fans an opportunity of meeting their favorite players and having baseball discussions with them. Fan club tickets are available at regular Met ticket outlets. Or if you prefer, you can write to Met Fan Club, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. And again, it's fouled back over the screen into the crowd. The first fan club session has been set for April 23rd with Ed Charles. On April 26th, Jerry Kuzman. May the 10th, Bud Harrelson. May 14th, Ron Swoboda. May 28th, Tug McGraw. And May 31st, Ken Boswell. Two-strike delivery to Bateman is fouled on the left field line and back toward the crowd. New York, six runs on ten hits, two errors. Montreal, four runs, six hits, and no errors. Montreal has a lot of bats in the lineup. They are a team that will probably score a lot of runs. Two-strike delivery, hard slider just outside, one and two. Pitching one and two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Seaver fans John Bateman. The fourth strike out of the game for Tom Seaver. And it brings up Coco LeBoy, the rookie third baseman. The last three years he's played in the Pacific Coast League, and all three years he has hit very well. Coco LeBoy from Ponce, Puerto Rico, is 28 years old. He's a right hand hitter. Swing and a miss on a breaking pitch. Strike one. The infield and the outfield straight away against the right hand batter and a fastball on the outside corner strike two call. This is John Payson the principal owner of the New York Mets is here. So is Don Grant the chairman of the board. Ground ball hit off the end of the bat slowly. Boswell charged again. Picks it up. Throws to first. Ball is dropped by Eddie Crane. Coco Lemoy reaches safely. Boswell's throw. Popped off the edge of Cranepool's glove, and the error is being charged to Boswell for a wide throw. Cranepool got his glove on it, but they ruled the throw was too wide. And so Boswell has drawn his third error of the game. The hitter is the rookie center fielder, Don Hahn. H A H N. He's a right hand hitter. Pitched by Seaver, is under the knees, ball one.
Now Ty Klein has come out of the on deck circle as a pinch hitter. It is bounced off the mask of Jerry Grody. One ball and one strike and Jerry takes the mask off to take a look at it and make sure it's all right. Center fielder Don Hahn. He played at Fresno California last year. And he batted 256. And a foul ball hit off the end of the bat over toward the crowd. Carol Simbera is starting to warm up now for the uh, Montreal Expos. The New York Mets lead the Expos 6 to 4. We're at the top half of the fifth inning. Tom Seaver has not had his overpowering stuff going for him so far today. The count is one and two. And the pitch by Seaver is in the dirt, blocked by Jerry Grody. It's two and two. Well, it's a wonderful feeling to be back in Shea Stadium. Now the 2 2 delivery. It's over. Strike three call. Seaver changed speeds. And caught the rookie center fielder Don Hahn looking. That's five strikeouts for Tom Seaver. No runs, no hits, one error, and one left on. So we've come halfway at the end of four and a half innings. The New York Mets six and the Montreal Expos four. Now here's a word from Rangel. In the early morning chill, a man meets a train in a New York freight yard. He's there to make sure a great lager beer stays great. This man is from Rheingold. And he's checking on a malt shipment. Barley malt from America's Great Plains. At the brewery, samples of this malt will be carefully examined by beer experts who make certain it meets Rheingold's high standards. Quality standards that have made Rheingold Extra Dry a truly great beer. You can see that greatness in the proud Rheingold 10-minute head. That's the unmistakable sign of a great beer. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Ask for Rheingold whenever you buy beer. Rheingold's head stays so high. Rheingold's brewed extra dry. Won't you try extra dry Rheingold beer? The Rheingold 10-minute head. Haven't you timed it yet? Rheingold Breweries, New York and Orange, New Jersey. Leading off of the Mets in the last of the fifth inning, the glider, Ed Charles. Ed has hit a little squibbler and been thrown out and taken a call, third strike. Now the pitch is low and outside, ball one. The Montreal pitcher is Jerry Robertson. Gene Mock has now called on three pitchers in today's game. Fastball, a grounder hit slowly to third, charging hard. Is LaBoy the throw not in time? He beat it out at infield hit. For the Mets, their 11th hit of the ball game. Manager Gil Hadwick has Cal Kuntz warming up in the bullpen. Tom Seaver has thrown a lot of pitches over the first five innings. This being his opening assignment, Gill may not want him to throw too many more pitches. Now Eddie Cranepool will be the hitter. Eddie has one hit and two times up. Everybody in the lineup now, with the exception of Bud Harrelson and Tom Seaver, have at least one base hit. One ball and no strikes to Eddie Cranepool. Now Robertson off the stretch. Delivers a strike over the outside corner. One ball, one strike. The opening game is underway at Kansas City, and the new expansion Kansas City Royals lead Minnesota one to nothing at the end of one. Tom Hall pitching for Minnesota and Wally Bunker for Kansas City. Right here at six to four in favor of the Mets. We're in the last half of the fifth inning. Jerry Robertson, the Montreal pitcher was at Tulsa in the Pacific Coast League last year. He won four and lost two. Ground ball going foul back toward the on-deck circle.
Robertson worked as a relief pitcher in the Coast League last season. Fastball outside and high, and the count is two and two. Warren Spahn managed the Tulsa Ball Club. The Oilers won the Pacific Coast League pennant, and Robertson was in 53 ball games in relief. Ed Charles leads off first. The pitch is fouled back over the screen and up into the crowd. It's the Expos again tomorrow and Thursday, and then the Cardinals of Red Sheehan East coming in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The infield hit by Ed Charles, the 11th hit of the game for the New York Mets. And the pitch to Crane Pool, and the Crane takes it. It's outside and high, three and two. Now let's keep an eye on Ed Charles and see if Gil Hodges has him in motion. The Expos with their outfield deep and around toward right against Eddie Crane Pool. Three two delivery, the runner goes, and it's hit high in the air. A foul ball is going to swerve over out of play into the crowd beyond the tarp down the left field line. Jerry Grody hitting seventh in the order is on deck. Tommy Agee has paced the attack so far today for New York. He doubled it with the bases loaded driving three runs in. The runner goes the pitch is fouled again and the glider gets the work out. He's been running on the last two pitches both fouled off. Beautiful opening day crowd here in Shea Stadium. Bailey holding against the runner and again Charles leads away. He's running the pitch. High foul fly hit down the right field line and back into the crowd. And this time as Charles retreats to first he walks back. Jerry Grody working with that pine tar cloth in the on deck circle. It's a mannerism of Jerry's. The runner goes. The pitch. Line drive hit in the air to right field. Stop going back. Makes the catch. And now Ed Charles again has to retreat to first base. That ball well hit by Eddie Cranepool. A line drive and stop went back to the warning track to take it. Jerry Grody has singled to left and reached on a walk. Jerry, the all-star backstop a year ago, getting off to a good start with a base hit his first time at bat. One out and one on. Last of inning number five. The Mets lead six to four. And the slider is off the outside corner. One ball and no strikes. There goes Charles for hitting a run play. A ground ball hit slowly back to the mound. The play will go to first base. Charles trying for third, and he slides safely. He caught Bob Bailey flat hit it. And Ed Charles goes from first to third on a ground ball hit back to the mound on a hit and run play. Bailey, until it was too late, did not realize that Charles was taking the extra base. By the time it dawned on him, it was too late to even throw. Ed Charles on third, two men down. Now the left side of the infield at first had pulled in, then realizing there are two men away, Mario Wills drops back. Bud Harrelson batting left-handed against right-hander Jerry Robertson. Charles on third. And Bud bluffs at a punt, takes the pitch high, ball one. We have action in both bullpens. Cal Coons warming up for New York and Carol Sombera for Montreal. Inside and low, blocked by Johnny Bateman on the counters, two balls and no strikes. Although Cal Coons is loosening up in the bullpen, Tom Seaver is kneeling in the on deck circle.
Now they're going to put Harrelson on intentionally. Ball three is served outside. And ball four, and it will bring up Tom Seaver. Now let's see if Seaver comes up to hit or if Gil Hodges is going to put up a pinch hitter. Kevin Collins is coming out to bat for Tom Seaver. In the dugout, the Mets keep track of the number of pitches thrown in the course of a ball game. As we mentioned, Seaver over the first five innings threw a lot more pitches than he normally would in a five inning stint. And so Gil Hodges feels that this is enough today for Tom Seaver, and Cal Kuntz will take over the sixth inning. Batting for Seaver, number one, Kevin Collins. Number one. Right here, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is the sound of Nashville for the New York area, WJRZ and Hackensack. 97 on your dial. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner. Runners at first and third. Collins, the pinch hitter, takes outside and low. It's ball one. Mets lead 6-4. Down comes the pitch and it's foul back toward the screen and out of play. Ed Charles on third. Bud Harrelson is on first. The 1-1 delivery. Low and inside. Bateman has to dig this one out. Stadium shadows now have moved past the pitching mound. Both the pitcher and the hitter are now in the shadows of the stadium. Tommy Agee is the on deck hitter. Now Collins takes low ball three, and the count goes to three and one. Early in the game today, Tommy Agee came up with the bases loaded. That was in the second inning, and he drove three runs home with a double to deep left center. Here's the pitch on the way, a swing and a miss at a fastball, three and two. For the Mets in today's game, A.G. has three RBIs. Rod Gaspar, Ken Boswell, and Cleon Jones have all picked up an RBI. Bud Harrelson, the runner at first, will be on his way. The count is three and two, and there are two men away. Bailey is not holding at first base. And the pitch on the way fouled into the dirt back toward the dugout. Bud Harrelson on the fly has to turn and come back. Now right hander Steve Shea is warming up for the Montreal Expos. There goes Harrelson and a check swing foul ball back up into the mezzanine section of Shea Stadium and out of play. Steve Shea, who was with the Houston Astros last year, is on call in the Montreal bullpen. New York six runs on 11 hits. Montreal four runs on six hits. Here's the 3-2 delivery. Driven foul deep down the right field line and into the crowd. Kevin getting a little out in front, and he ripped it. Ball went into the corner, but a foul ball. Now Kevin Bud Harrelson is getting a good workout. He's been running on the three and two. Charles on third. Harrelson on first. Three and two and two men down. Young Jerry Robertson on the mound. Here's his pitch on the way. And for the third time, it's foul back out of play. Well, it's all over at Detroit, and Denny McLean, who was a 30-game winner last year, pitched a three-hitter before a crowd of 53,000 as Detroit beat Cleveland 6-2. Luis Tiant was the losing pitcher. There goes Harrelson, the pitch, 
is popped up outside third. It's playable. Jose LeBoy is under it in foul ground, and he has it for the out. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left on. At the end of five innings, New York six runs, 11 hits, and three errors. Montreal four runs, six hits, and no errors. Maybe you think all lending companies are alike. Well, they're not. Household Finance is the one company that has been meeting people's money needs since 1878, longer than anyone else in the business. Household Finance is the company that's trusted by more than two and a half million people every year. So Household has more customers than anyone else in the business. And Household Finance is the only lending company that advises never borrow money needlessly. If you're about to borrow money, remember, lending companies are not alike. One is different because it has more years in the business, more customers, more experience in solving all kinds of money problems. The lending company with the important difference is Household Finance, where you borrow with confidence. Call or visit the folks at Household soon. See your phone book for the address of the HFC office nearest you. Cal Kuntz is now pitching for the New York Mets. And we're going to have a pinch hitter from Montreal. Ty Klein is coming out, and he will hit for Jerry Robertson. Tom Seaver worked five innings, gave up four runs, allowed six hits, walked three, and struck out five. Tom seemed to still have his stuff going. But he had thrown an extraordinary number of pitches for Seaver for five innings. And Gil Hodges, who keeps track of the number of pitches in the dugout, wanted to take no chances on Tom tiring his arm or hurting his arm by extending himself any further on opening day. And so Cal Coons takes over the pitching. Don Shaw is warming up now for Montreal. Fast ball outside, ball one. We're in the sixth inning, and Ty Klein is batting for Jerry Robertson. Nobody on, nobody out. Ed Charles in close at third against Klein, the left-hand hitter. Off the outside corner, ball two, it's two and nothing. 53,572, the paid crowd at Detroit today, as Denny McLean pitched a three-hitter. Detroit besting Cleveland six to two. The loser was Luis Tion. Home runs by Larry Brown for Cleveland. A two run homer by Al Kaline. It's over at the knees for a call strike two and one. Concentration and confidence. Have been a great help to Calvin Kuntz. Now Cal takes his sign from Jerry Grody. Let's have their outfield around to right. A little bit high, it's ball three, three and one. Cal made one start last year. The Mets were strapped for a starting pitcher when they got to Cincinnati. Gil Hodges asked Cal to start and try and go four innings. He wound up pitching six shutout innings. Ron Taylor came in and pitched the last three of shutout ball. And the Mets got a shutout from their two relief aces. Low ball four, and Klein reaches on a walk. Say, what does it take to be a winner? Find out at Sitco. You might win $2,500. Mario Wells has two doubles and three times at bat. Mario switch hitter batting left against Cal Kuntz. Eddie Cranepool will hold against the runner. Now the pitch on the way. Over the outside corner for a call strike. Wills likes to hit to the opposite field, so Ed Charles comes in close defensively to try and press him into trying to pull the ball. 
Tommy Agee shades a bit toward right center. At second and short, they're in a stride against the speed of Mari Wills. Now the pitch. He bluffs it a bunt, and the pitch is over. Strike two. Team Mack has Mari Wells leading off for his ball club with Gary Sutherland batting second and Rusty Stab hitting third. The Montreal bullpen has been a busy place today. Now Kuntz lobs the ball over to first base. Stan Landis umpiring at first, Billy Williams at second, and Nick Colossi at third. With the senior umpire, and crew chief of the team, Tom Gorman, behind the plate. The two strike delivery, outside and low, one ball, two strikes. New York, six runs, 11 hits, and three errors. Montreal, four runs, six hits, and no errors. Pitching one and two. Outside and high, and Wills lays off. The count is even two and two. The first two runs scored off Tom Seaver in today's game were unearned runs. So Tom actually gave up just two earned runs over the five innings. Wills standing well back to the plate. Here's the pitch to him. He bounces it foul back toward the dugout. He can aggravate a pitcher to no end by fouling off a lot of pitches. Looks like the Mets will be hitting against their former teammate, Don Shaw, when they come into bat in their half of the inning. Now Kuntz up in pitching position. Turns, throws to first base. With Wills hitting. Chances of a hit and run play being on are always pretty good. Now the pitch on the way. Ground ball hit toward the middle and smothered by Harris in the ball ground. Horse play and a great play by Bud Harrelson. There's the play of the day to the delight of the big crowd here at Shea. Mario Wills hit a ground ball right over second base. Buddy Harrelson left his feet after racing that way, made a head first dive, smothered the ground ball, and while he was on the ground, he flipped the ball to Boswell to make the force play on Ty Klein. Sparkling play by Bud Harrelson. One out and one on. The hitter is Gary Sutherland, the second baseman. Gary is 0 for 3. Right hand batter waiting, and he hits a high pop fly out behind second. Ken Boswell trailing back into short center, takes it for the out. Two men away in the top of the sixth inning. The hitter will be Rusty Stop. Right fielder, Rusty Stop. Number 10. Now Gil Hodges has Al Jackson starting to throw easily in the Mets bullpen. Rusty Staub, one for two, his last time up, they put him on intentionally. Eddie Cranepool holds against the runner, Mari Wells. It's six to four, Mets leading, we're in the sixth inning. Now the pitch. Outside, ball one. Out in the Montreal bullpen, Don Shaw has completed his warm up activity. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball for a strike. One and one to Rusty Stav. 17 hits in today's ball game. The Mets have 11 and the Astros have the Astros. The Expos have six. You get some Rusty Stav hitting. It's kind of natural to say Astros. The one one delivery. There goes Wills. The pitch is low. The peg is low. And Wills slides in with a stolen base. Mario Wills steals second.
Or he got a good jump on Cal Coon. He got a little bit of the surprise element going for him with the Expos trailing by two. You would not normally expect him to be stealing in that spot. He had to be sure, and he was. It was back in 1962 that Mario Will stole 104 bases. Last year, at the age of 35, he still stole 52 bases. Now the breaking ball inside of the knees to Rusty Stout. Three balls and a strike. Mario Wells on second, two men away, and a count of three and one to Rusty Stout. Now Coons checks the runner. And the pitch to Rusty, a breaking ball low, ball four, and the tying runs are on. That brings up Mac Jones, and you have to be careful with him. He has hit over 30 home runs in one season in the big league. Mac Jones, the cleanup batter, has reached on a walk, double to right, and bounced out. He was thrown out by Kenny Boswell. So Jones has one for two. For the Expos, Bob Bailey knocked in the first two runs. Staub drove in a run, and Dan McGinn hit a home run. The pitch is over at the knees, Franklin calls. Runners on first and second, two men away, time of the sixth inning. Mets trying to protect a two-run lead. Here's the pitch back to him. And his fastball is too high, one ball, one strike. Cal likes to keep the ball down. Cal makes the one second stop and elects to step off chasing Mario Wills back to second. The paid crowd for today's opening game at Shea Stadium. 44,541. Pitching one and one. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball by Cal Coon. Now it's one ball and two strikes. The total crowd at Shea is 45,653. Jones, a pull hitter, and the infield has swung far around to right for him. The outfield is also deep to right. And a line drive hit toward the alley in deep left center field. The scoring for extra bases, it'll tie up the ball game. Wills has come in to score. Stab around third is heading home. The relay will not be in time, and the game is tied. A long double to deep left center field by Mac Jones. That's his second two base hit of the ball game, and the Expos are a worthy opponent on opening day. Bob Bailey, number three. Two RBIs for Mike Jones. They play him way around to right. And he hit a hard line drive as straight as a string up the alley in left center field. It had to be chased all the way back to the wall at the 396 mark. Now the Expos have the leading run on second. They have scored two runs after two were down to tie up the game here on the top of the sixth inning. The batter is Bob Bailey. Bailey has a double driving two runs in, an intentional walk, and he flied to deep right field. Pitch back Kuntz, curve is over, strike one. So Tom Seaver, who pitched five innings and left the game with a two-run lead, cannot figure in the scoring one way or the other. Cal Kuntz is now the pitcher of record for the New York Mets. Here's the pitch by Cal. Fastball taken high. One ball, one strike.
Mac Jones is on second base. He knocked two runs in. Here's the one one delivery. Ground ball hit down to third taken by Ed Charles. He pegs it across the crane pool. The side is up. The Expos rally to tie the ball game. They scored two runs on one hit. But that one hit was timely. A double by Mac Jones. No errors. One left on. At the end of five and a half innings, it's now the Montreal Expos six and the New York Mets six. Now the Expos have their fourth pitcher in the ball game. Ex-New York Met left-hander Don Shaw. Don went to the Montreal Expos in the National League expansion draft. Don has a good slider and an exceptional sinker. The native of San Diego, California. But Jack Grant was the Montreal starter. He worked an inning and a third. Ty Klein, who came in the game as a pinch hitter, is going to stay in the ball game. So he will be hitting in the number nine spot. And the pitcher, Don Shaw, will be hitting in Don Hahn's position in the batting order, the number eight spot. Tommy Agee leading off, bottom half of the sixth inning. The game tied up. And a high pop foul outside first that might be playable. Bailey going over, he's under it, and he grabs it on the warning track. One pitch by Don Shaw, and he gets Tommy Agee out. It brings up Rod Gaspar. Tommy was two for two in a walk coming up with three RBIs. Now Rod Gaspar and Rod has two for three and this is his first major league ball game. Rod will be hitting right handed against Don Shaw. And the sinker is in at the knees strike one call. Ken Boswell is the on deck hitter. Low and outside, one ball, one strike. Don Shaw, Carol Simber, and Jerry Robertson figure to be the late inning relief pitchers for the Montreal Expos. Here's the 1 1 delivery. And it's taken under the knees, ball two. Two and one now to Rod Gaspar. Rod could very easily be three for three and this is his first major league ball game. His first time up today he hit a line drive into a double play. The Mets were playing hit and run which made the double play possible. Off the outside corner and the count goes to three and one. With a hit and run play on the shortstop Wills was breaking to cover second and was able to stab the line drive and then throw to first. Three one delivery by Don Shaw is way inside ball four and for the third time in the game Rod Gaspar is on. This will bring up Kenny Boswell and Ken has two for three. He also has a run batted in. Boswell. Number 12. New York six runs on 11 hits with three errors and Montreal six runs seven hits and no errors. Bob Bailey will hold against the runner Rod Gaspar who has good speed. Boswell a good hitter and they play him to pull the outfield swings around to right. Breaking ball fails to come down ball one. Coco LeBoy is in close at third against Ken Boswell. And the pitch is inside and low. Ball two. It's two and nothing. This one has been seesaw. Montreal got two unearned runs in the first. The Mets came back scoring three for a 3-2 lead in the second. Montreal got a run to tie the game in the third. Montreal regained the lead 4-3 to three with a run on the top of the fourth. Then the Mets came up with three to go ahead 6-4. A check swing and the pitch is called a strike. Two and one. 
And then the Expos tied the game in the top of the center. So each team twice has had the lead. Leon Jones waiting to hit next. Gaspar edging off at first. And he has to hurry back. As Don Shaw throws over. We have a much nicer day today than we had most of the time during spring training in Florida. Here's the 2 1 pitch. It is in the dirt. Ball three. It's scooped out by John Bateman. And the count goes to three and one. Three balls, one strike to Ken Boswell. Lefty Don Shaw pitching for Montreal delivers a swing and a miss and a breaking pitch and now the count is three and two. Now since it's left hander against left hander let's see whether or not the Mets run the risk of having Gaspar go. Gaspar leads off he's running here's the pitch a swing and a miss strike three the throw to second not in time Gaspar steals second. He had the throw beaten by a fairly wide margin. Two men away, the tie breaking run in scoring position, and Cleon Jones coming up. Cleon has two for three, and a run batted in. Leon singled in the first inning and he singled again in the fourth inning to drive home a run. Now Don Shaw up in pitching position and Jones holds up on the swing and lets it break inside and low ball one. Eddie Yost coaching at third and Yogi Berra at first. Ed Charles listing up his shoulder muscles in the on deck circle. And the pitch on the way. Breaking ball down in the dirt. It's ball two. Both teams have been getting that big hit all day long. And Mac Jones doubled to tie the game up in the top of the inning. He doubled with two men down to drive the runs in. Pitch to Cleon. Ground ball hit the shortstop. Marty Wells is up with it. He throws across the diamond in time and the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. At the end of the sixth inning, it's Montreal six and the New York Mets six. Lindsey Nelson will join you for the play-by-play -play in just one moment. Now here's a word from Rango. People think of New York as many things, but nobody thinks it's a small town. Nobody... We'll be going to the seventh inning, but before we do, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. The newest trend in modern music comes from Nashville, and you hear it all day on WJRZ Hackensack, 97 on your dial. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kahn and Bob Murphy at Shea Stadium, and John Bateman is up. Cal Coach with the pitch swung on and missed strike one. The Expos up here in the top half of the seventh inning with a score tied 6-6 at Shea Stadium in New York. Today's attendance 45,653 for opening day at Shea, the first international major league game ever played. Here's a breaking pitch low and away. 1-1. Tom Seaver started for the Mets in case you've joined us along the way. He pitched five innings, but with the score having been tied by the Expos in the sixth, he cannot be the winner or the loser. Kuntz with a 1-1 delivery. Swung on, hit on the ground, over the glove of Kuntz and taken by Harrelson on the run. He throws to first in time. Bud Harrelson, like a vacuum cleaner there at shortstop, scooping that one up on the run. Tried Royal Crown Cola lately. It's moving up fast in popularity, catching on all over the country. Get with R.C., the comer.
Coco LaVoy is up now, the third baseman. Here's a pitch swung on and missed for strike one. LaVoy is 0 for 3. He was on on an error by Boswell in the fifth inning of this ball game. Don Shaw is on deck. Shaw is batting number eight in manager Gene Mock's Montreal batting order. Here's a pitch in for a call strike. Good breaking pitch by Cal Kunt. Manager Gil Hodges had Don Cardwell warming up during the early innings of the ball game today, indicating he would go with Cardwell as a long man, but when they got along past five, then he switched off to Cal Kunt. Here's a pitch that misses outside, one and two. The boy sets back out of the batter's box for a moment. Now he's ready to come back in. This will be a one-two pitch. Swung on and missed. Good breaking pitch by Cal Kurtz. Gives him his first strike out of the day. Two expos out in the seventh inning, and Don Shaw, the pitcher, is scheduled up and... He is coming up now. Shaw, formerly with the New York Mets, he was an expansion draft selection of the Expos off the Met roster. Don Shaw. We're on the top of the seventh with a score tied, 6-6. Six, six. Now Cal Kunz delivers and the pitch is outside. Shaw is a left-hand batter. Kunz is a right-hand pitcher. The Expos have three ball players of some note that we have not seen in action here today for a variety of reasons. Here's a pitch high and away. Don Clendenin, now the property of the Expos, still working out in Florida. He had in indicated that he would retire and did not indicate his willingness to play until just a few days ago, so he's still working out in Florida. Don Clendenin, first baseman, selected off the Pittsburgh roster and later traded. Here's a pitch outside. And the trail that trade that was aborted with Houston that brought Rusty Staub to Montreal. Then there's Manny Mota who's still recovering from an injury. Manny Mota, right hand batting outfielder who was the first choice of Montreal in the expansion draft. Here's a pitch in for a call strike. And then Bobby Wine, an infielder picked up from the Philadelphia Phillies when Larry Jackson decided to retire after he was selected in the expansion draft. Here's a pitch low, and it's a walk to Don Shaw. Third walk issued by Kuntz. Puts Shaw on at first with two men out and brings up Ty Klein. Ty Klein came on as a pinch hitter in the sixth inning and stayed in the ball game. Ty Klein, a fellow who has been around the major league. One time with the Cleveland Indians, he was with the Milwaukee Braves, the Atlanta Braves, the San Francisco Giants. Ty Klein. Rainpool plays behind the runner. Don Shaw at first. The score is tied 6-6. Pitch is high for a ball. Klein settles himself back in. Ed Charles on the edge of the grass at third against the left-hand batter. Shaw leads off the bag at first. Kuntz with the pitch, and it's a curveball inside. The lights are on here now at Shea Stadium. The lights were turned on at the end of the sixth inning. Maury Wills is waiting on deck. Now again, Cal Kuntz to Klein, and it is low for a ball. He goes behind 3-0 now to Ty Klein, and we're going to get a little more action down in the Met bullpen pretty quickly now. A little action starting down there right now. Ron Taylor is up and throwing. Ron Taylor, who is a Canadian by birth, up and throwing. Ball four to Ty Klein, so Kuntz Issues his fourth walk. Moves Shaw to second. Klein's on at first. Maury Wills, a switch hitter, coming up. 
Ed Charles comes over from his post to third to have a word with Kuntz. Score side 6-6. Six, six. Now left-hander Al Jackson gets up to join Ron Taylor in the Met bullpen. Maury Wills was called out on strikes, doubled, doubled, and hit into a force play. The Mets have had 11 base hits. The Montreal Expos have had seven. The Expos make another bid here now in the top half of the seventh inning. Curveball and it's hit out into center field for a base hit. Rounding third and coming home now is Don Shaw. He scores the play is at third, not in time, and Wills goes to second on the throw to third. The Expos go out in front by a score of seven to six. As Ty Klein moves to third, Wills gets a single, a run batted in, and moves to second on the throw. Montreal seven, the Mets six. It's been that kind of a day here at Shea. Montreal got two runs in the first inning. But the Mets got three in the bottom of the second to go ahead by a score of three to two. Montreal tied it up in the third. It was three three then. Then Montreal went ahead four to three in the fourth. But the Mets got three more in the bottom half of the fourth inning to go ahead by a score of six to four. Neither team scored in the fifth. Fever came out. Montreal got two in the sixth inning to tie it at six six. And now the Expos have scored one in the seventh to go ahead. And with two men out, they have runners at second and third. And Gary Sutherland is up. He's gone 0 for 4 today. He's a right-hand batter. It's been a day of frustration for both teams. Here is a check swing foul ball. Rolls off to one side. It's strike one. Ty Klein, the runner at third. Maury Wills, the runner at second. Good speed on the bases for the Montreal Expos. Runners lead at second and third. Cal Kunz with a pitch hammered on the ground foul. Back at third and down by coach Peanut Lowry on the lines at third base. Lowry was Gene Mock's third base coach in Philadelphia for a number of years. And then was released and he signed on with the San Francisco Giants. When Gene Mock became manager of the Expos, he signed Lowry again as his third base coach, which would seem to indicate that it was not Gene Mock who fired him at Philadelphia. Count is two strikes to Sutherland. Coons off the stretch. Here's a pitch. Curveball. Hammered on the ground and taken by Charles Deep. The throw is the first. And it's a short hop just in time. Dug out by Cranville. Cranville gave it the big stretch and dug out Charles throw on a short hop just in time to get Sutherland. On a very close play. It's one run on one hit. No errors and two men left in the middle of the seventh inning. The score is the Expo seven, the Mets six. Are you having trouble picking out a suitable gift for an upcoming occasion, such as a graduation present? If you are, the Mets have gift certificates available, which are sure to be popular with both the youngsters and the adults alike. Gift certificates are the same price as regular tickets, and they may be exchanged for tickets for any home game. That's $3.50 for box seats, $2.50 for reserve seats. Well, the Mets fans are up and stretching all around the ballpark now as we come up to the bottom half of the seventh inning. The Mets trail by a run, and Ed Charles will lead it off. The glider is one for three for the afternoon. Montreal, seven runs, eight hits, no errors. The Mets, six runs, 11 hits, three errors. Left-hander Don Shaw on the mound. The pitch is low for a ball. Ed Greenfield waiting on deck. Manager Gil Hodges of the Mets keeps his bullpen warm with Ron Taylor and Al Jackson. Here's a check swing. It's around four and up. One and one to Ed Charles. Mets crowd buzzing here now, trying to get something started on behalf of the hometown heroes who trail by a run. It's been a seesaw opener. This is the first international major league game ever played. 
That's low for a ball. Two and one. Coco Lavoy at third is guarding the line. The outfield defense swung around toward left. On right-hand batter Ed Charles, who can hit for distance. He is capable of riding the ball. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. 2-2. Two -two. Don Money has hit his second home run of the day for the Phillies. This one coming in the top of the ninth with two men on. Pitches low and away to Charles. So the Phils are tied now with Leo DeRoche's Chicago Cubs 5-5. Phils are still batting in the top half of the ninth inning. Don Money with two home runs. Here's a payoff pitch, swung on and missed, and Shaw strikes out Ed Charles. Second strikeout for Shaw. Ed Cranville is coming up. He's one for three. He started the big rally in the bottom half of the second inning that produced three runs. Cranville made a fine defensive play, digging out Charles' throw to end that last inning as he gave it the big stretch and dug out the short hop throw. Left-hand pitcher facing the left-hand batter. Montreal seven, the Mets six. Low for a ball. Well, if you happen to be a commuter driving home and have the radio on, we hope you'll get in the habit of that throughout the course of the Mets baseball season. We'll be broadcasting every game played by the New York Mets. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Low and away for a ball. It's 2-0. And, oh. and, of course, we'll have an afternoon game tomorrow and another on Thursday and another on Friday. Cardinals are also here in the weekend for afternoon games, Saturday and Sunday. It's the Cardinals Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Montreal today, tomorrow, and Thursday. That pitch is low. Gone 3-0 now to Ed Cranville when you trail by a run. You like to get a base runner any possible way you can get him. Jerry Grody is waiting on deck. Shaw takes the sign. 3-0 pitch to Cranville. He's taking and draws a walk. It's low and away. So the Mets pick up a base runner with one man out, and Jerry Grody comes up. Grody is one for two on the walk. He scored two runs here today. Jerry Grody, a right-hand batter, facing left-hand pitcher Don Shaw. Bob Bailey at first comes over the hold against the runner. Now the pitch. It's high for a ball. 1 and 0. Oh. Now Shaw delivers a pitch out. Nothing on. As Bateman shifted outside to take the pitch out. Figuring if the Mets might have the hit and run on. Grody looks down to sign man Eddie Yost now at third. See if anything's on. Cranville leads at first base. 2-0 pitch. Swung on. Hit on the ground to third. It's a foul ball. Fielded there. In foul territory. And fired on to second. Cranville went sliding in. It's no play. A foul ball taken by Coco Leboy, and he played it to second. Throw was a little inside to Sutherland, and Cranville went sliding in in a cloud of dust and got a roar of approval from the crowd. John Bacabella is loosening up his arm down in the bullpen area for the Montreal Expos. John Bacabella, who is a man of all sorts of infield, outfield, and catching talent. Count to Grody is two balls and one strike. It's Cranville leads. Bailey holds against him. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. It's two and two. Bud Harrelson is waiting on deck. Don Shaw spent most of last year at Jacksonville in the Met Farm system. But then was scouted by Gene Mock after the Mets had brought him up in late season. This will be a 2-2 delivery. It's low. The count runs full at three and two. 
Managerial decision here now for manager Gil Hodges. Does he start the runner? Ed Craneville, who does not have the greatest speed in the world. How does he play it safe and hold the runner on the 3-2 pitch? The Mets trail by a run. They're up there in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Shaw off the stretch. Cranfield's running. Pitch is low and away. It's a walk to Grody. Third walk issued by Shaw. The second consecutive pass. Puts runners at first and second with one man on. And Bud Harrison's being called back. Ron Swoboda. Ron Swoboda will bat for Harrison. Against the left-hander. Manager Gil Hodges can do this because he has Al Weiss as infield insurance. Of course, he has a number of ball players who can stay in the ball game. And Weiss is going out to run for Cranepool. Al Weiss, who likely will stay in as the shortstop in place of Harrison, is running for Cranepool to give the Mets a little extra speed with the tying run, which is at second base. And the go-ahead run is represented by Grody at first base. Weiss is running now for Cranepool, who is out of the ball game. Montreal leads seven to six. Two right-handers throwing in the bullpen now for Montreal. Carol Simbera, Steve Shea. Runners lead for the Mets at first and second. Pitch to Swoboda, low for ball one. Amos Otis has moved out on deck. Amos Otis is on deck for the Mets as a prospective pinch hitter for pitcher Cal Cook. Manager Gil Hodges making the bid for the Mets here in the bottom half of the seventh inning as he's gone to his reserve. There's one man out. The crowd has come alive. Here's a pitch, and it's a breaking pitch low. 2-0 now to Ron Swoboda. Swoboda not in the starting lineup today because he had a disappointing spring in which he hit 209. But last year on opening day at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, he had a home run off Juan Marichal. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. It's 2-1. and one. Now Weiss the runner at second base. Jerry Grody the runner at first base. Al Jackson and Ron Taylor in the Med bullpen. They pause for a moment to look at what's happening on the field. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and line fouled on the right field line out of play into the stand. So the count is 2-2 two and two now to Swoboda with Amos Otis waiting around on deck. He's a right-hand batter. Otis. Manager Gil Hodges can make all sorts of moves. He might... Leave Otis in the ball game, let him play third, and move Charles over to first base with Weiss at short. This will be a 2-2 delivery. Hit on the ground to third, taken by LaBoy, played over to second for one, the relay, and a double play. That retires the side. From LaBoy to Sutherland to Bailey, 5-4-3, and the side is out. It's no run, no hit, no errors, two walks, and one left. And at the end of seven full innings, the score is Montreal seven, the Mets six. Now, New York Mets now, Al Jackson comes in to do the pitching. He'll be batting number nine. Cleon Jones moves from left field to first base. Al Weiss stays in at shortstop and will bat in Ed Cranfield's place in the batting order. And Ron Swoboda stays in the ballgame in left field and bats number eight. So those changes for the New York Mets. Jones moving from left field to first base. Swoboda staying in the game in left field in place of Jones. Weiss, who ran for Cranville, stays in at shortstop. And the pitcher coming into the ball game now is Al Jackson. We'll be going to the eighth inning. To this point, Montreal, seven runs, eight hits, no errors. The Mets, six runs, 11 hits, and three errors. By leaving Weiss in the ball game and having put him in as a runner and leaving Swoboda in, manager Gil Hodges, when he brought in Jackson, had no alternative but to have him bat nice in the batting order. 
number 10. Rusty Staub comes up to lead off for the Expos here in the top half of the eighth inning. Coons pitched two innings, gave up three runs on two hits, struck out one and walked four. Jackson is a left-hander facing left-hand batter Rusty Staub, who is one for two and two walks here today. Breaking pitch over his head. It's ball one. Al Jackson, one of the original expansion Mets. Chosen before the 62 season, off the roster of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Here's a drive to deep right field, and racing back is Gaspar to the wall, going, going, gone, a home run for Rusty Staub. So Rusty Staub gets the second Expo home run of the day. Dan McGinn, a pitcher, got the other, and Montreal leads the Mets by a score of 8-6. to six. Over the right field fence at the 371-foot side. Now Mac Jones. Jones. He's had a pair of doubles today, and the last one drove in two runs in the sixth inning that tied the score at that time. It's a jubilant dugout for Montreal. Jackson's pitch, and it's low for a ball. Ron Taylor gets up to start throwing again down the mid bullpen. Mac Jones, a left-hand batter with a closed stance. Now Jackson with a 1-0 delivery. Swung on and missed. It's 1-1. One one. This will be a 1-1 pitch. It's on the way. Low for a ball. At this moment, Cal Kuntz is the pitcher of record on the short side for the New York Mets. He had finished the 1968 season with six wins in a row, which tied the club record. Here's a 2-1 delivery. In there for a call strike, it's 2-2. Two two. Nobody on, nobody out. Jackson delivers 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. He tried to check it, but took it around. It's a strikeout. Credit to Dow Jackson. Mac Jones out swinging one away, and Bob Bailey's coming up. Bailey had a double to drive in the first two runs of the game in the first inning. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Chicago Cubs are going to the 10th inning, tied 5-5. Reagan is coming to do the pitching now for Chicago, and Barry Lursch is in there for Philadelphia. Ernie Banks had two homers. Don Money had two homers. Pitch is low and away, bounding off. It's ball one to Bob Bailey. The Pirates and the Cardinals tonight. The Giants and Atlanta tonight. Houston and the San Diego Padres on the West Coast tonight. Here's a 1-0 delivery to Bailey. In there for a call strike. It's 1 1. Again, Jackson's pitch this time off the outside corner. It goes to two balls and one strike. Montreal 8, the Mets 6 in the top half of the eighth inning. Two on delivery. Swung on it on the ground through the hole in the left field for a Bob Bailey base hit. He turns and holds it first. Swoboda up with the ball, plays it back, and John Bateman's coming up. He's gone 0 for 4. Someone hands you the extra bill you can't afford. How do you handle it? You get a bill payer loan from HFC. Household finance, where you borrow confidently. Bateman, a right-hand batter, facing left-hand pitcher Al Jackson. That pitch is low for a ball.
Leon Jones playing first base and holding against the runner, Bob Bailey. Throw to first. Jones digs it out. Throw it down in the dirt. Gene Mock was saying before the ball game he watched Cleon play first base in Florida and he played the bag like Hal Chase. This will be a 1-0 delivery. Swung on and missed. It's one and one. Bateman up there with Coco Lavoy on deck. Again, Bailey leads it first. The pitch is low for a ball. We have a deck full of broadcasters and telecasters here this afternoon. As this game is going back to Montreal, of course, and across the portion of Canada, an English broadcast, an English telecast. A French broadcast, a French telecast. Runner goes, swinging a foul ball, off and out of play. That brings Bailey back with a 2-2 count to John Bateman. The Expos have eight runs, 10 hits. The Mets have six runs, 11 hits. It's a 2-2 delivery, and it's a pitch high, three and two. One man out. See if Gene Mock starts Bob Bailey on the pitch. Jackson throws over just a calling card to remind him he knows he's there. Bailey leads. He's running. Ground ball. It's punched through the hole into right field, and Bailey rounds second and is on his way to third. Up for the ball now is Gaspar. He took quite a divot out there. Gaspar took quite a divot in right field. As he came up with that ball, he came up with a piece of sod as well as he set to throw. So Bailey arrives safely at third. Bateman is on at first. Still only one man out, and Coco Lavoy is coming up. Except he's being called back for a word with manager Gene Mock, and we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WJRZ Hackensack, 97 on your dial, featuring the music of Nashville for the New York metropolitan area. Jose Lavoy. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Conner and Bob Murphy, and now manager Gil Hodge starts for the mound and indicates he wants a relief pitcher in from the bullpen. He wants Ron Taylor. The pitch to Coco LaBoy. So the Mets will be bringing in their fourth pitcher of the afternoon. Al Jackson retired only one man. So he pitched the third of an inning. Charged so far with one run on three hits. Struck out one and walked none. Ron Taylor, a native of Toronto, comes in. gets the ride in on the electric cart. He's 31 years of age. Last year, he was in 58 games with the Mets, all in relief. His record was one in five, but he had an earn run average of 2.69. He was second in the National League in save. His 14 saves last year broke Jack Hamilton's previous club mark of 13. Bill Regan had 21, the only relief pitcher in the league to have more saves than Ron Taylor. Well, let's check out the scoreboard while we're making the pitching change. The Phils and the Chicago Cubs are going to the 11th inning, tied 5-5. Barry Lurch against Phil Regan. Ernie Banks had two homers for Chicago, and Don Money had two for the Phils. Pittsburgh at St. Louis tonight. Giants at Atlanta tonight. Houston at San Diego tonight. The American League, the Boston Red Sox have scored two runs in the top half of the 10th inning to take a 4-2 lead over the Baltimore Orioles. 
Now Amos Otis is coming to the ball game in left field so that manager Gil Hodges can juggle his batting order. Otis comes in in left field and will bat ninth. Amos Otis. And Ron Taylor comes into the ball game and will bat eight. Number nine men will be leading off next inning. So that change made to allow manager Hodges to change off so that his pitcher wouldn't be leading off next inning. Coco LaVoy coming up. Montreal has runners at first and third. One man out. Montreal leading eight to six. We're in the top half of the eighth inning. Off the stretch. Now Ron Taylor with a pitch. And it is in there for a call strike. Detroit beat Cleveland today 6-2. To Denny McLean got the win. Luis Tiant took the loss. Kaline had almost. So did Larry Brown. The attendance was 53,572 at the home of the world champion Detroit Tigers. The end of five. It's the Minnesota Twins one. Kansas City one. Tom Hall against Wally Bunker with Bergmeyer relieving in the sixth. Greg Nettles homered in the second with nobody on. Strike one delivery. Swung on and popped up foul back of first. Cleon Jones over as far as he can go. It's in the seats out of play. Two strike count. Seattle Pilots play the California Angels tonight in California and the Chicago White Sox play the Oakland A's tonight in Oakland. Well Baltimore has tied that game against the Red Sox in the bottom half of the 10th inning as Frank Robinson hit a two run homer. Frank Robinson with a two run homer in the bottom of the 10th ties the score at 4 4 Baltimore and the Boston Red Sox. Here's a swing and a pop foul off the line at third drifting toward the seats it's out of play. Count holds it two strikes to Coco LaVoy. One man out. Now again, Ron Taylor delivers. Swung on and hit deep to left field. It's way back there. It could be. It's going, going. And this one is gone into the bullpen for a home run. Coco LaVoy with a three run homer. Montreal leads 11 to 6. Two of those runs charged against Al Jackson. One of them against Ron Taylor. A home run over the left field fence into the Montreal bullpen. The Expos lead 11 to 6 in the first ball game they have ever played. Don Shaw is up now. The pitch is in there for a call strike. Shaw is the pitcher of record for the Montreal Expos at this point. Cal Coach is the pitcher of record for the New York Mets at this point. That's in there for a call strike two. Two strike delivery. Swung on and missed. Don Shaw is a strikeout victim. Two expos out on the top of the eighth. Ty Klein will be the batter. Montreal 11 runs on 12 hits and the Mets 6 runs on 11 hits. Home run by LaBoy was the third Montreal home run of the day. Low for a ball. 1 0 to Ty Klein with Maury Wills on deck. Now again, Ron Taylor set to work. Offers 1 0, and it swung on and fouled off to the left side into the seats and out of play. 1 and 1. The Expos have scored four times here in the top half of the eighth inning.
Ron Taylor with a 1 1 delivery. And it's outside for a ball. Two and one. Guy Clown waggles the bat as he waits. Two one pitch. Swung on. And it's hit to Jones at first. Feels it cleanly. And out races Klein to the bag. Or the put out unassisted. So the side is retired, but Montreal got four runs on four hits, no errors and none left. In the middle of the eighth inning, the score is Montreal 11, the Mets 6. Well, you know, life is full of surprises, good surprises, happy surprises, and occasionally some sorry surprises. By this spring, even Uncle Sam may surprise you. Remember that 10% extra tax on your income? Well, it went into effect in April of last year, but withholding didn't start till July. That means you may still owe three months surtax. If you can't find the extra money to pay it, visit Household Finance for a taxpayer loan. Household says never borrow money needlessly, but when you need extra money for taxes, get a taxpayer loan from HFC. And remember, before you sign on the dotted line, you'll know what your loan will cost at Household Finance. After all, when it comes to cost, we know that no one likes to be surprised. Household Finance has over 1,500 offices nationwide. For a loan, large or small, see the yellow pages for the HFC office nearest you. The Montreal Expos now have made a defensive change. Don Bosch is playing center field. Don Bosch, formerly of the Mets, is in center field. Now playing center field. Batting in the front position. Number 19. Don Bosch. Number 19. Number 5. Number 5. Matt Matter. Number 25. Left fielder. Amos. Amos Otis now leads off the New York Mets here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And the pitch is in for a call strike. Ty Klein has been moved into left field with Bosch taking over in center. It is Klein now in left for the Expos. Pitch is low for a ball. One and one. Oh, it is a right hand batter and the pitch is low and away for a ball. Otis batted 269 this spring. Here's a chant of let's go Mets with the Mets five runs down here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Swing and a ground ball to third. Taken on a hop there by Coco LaBoy and played across in time. Otis is out. That'll bring up Tommy Agee. Tommy's two for three in a walk today. Batted in three runs with a long double in the bottom of the second. Montreal outfield alignment, Ty Klein in left, Don Bosch in center, Rusty Staub in right. A.G. swings and misses for strike one. And Don Shaw with the pitch in there for a call strike. A two strike count now to A.G. Rod Gaspar waiting on deck. Low in the dirt. Dug out on a short hop by catcher John Bateman. It's one and two. Mets and the Expos here again tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on the air at 2 p.m. Here's a one-two delivery. Low for a ball. It's two and two to Tommy Agee. The little general, Gene Mock, manager of the Expos. Arms folded in the corner of the Montreal dugout. 
This one's popped up to the right side. Sutherland goes back. Staub comes in. Sutherland makes the catch. So A.G. has popped to second. Two men out, and Rod Gaspar is the batter. This young man playing his first major league game is two for three and a walk. He's driven in a run and scored one today, and he's still on the base. Montreal 11, the Mets 6. Charles pitches in there for a call strike. Now again the delivery and it is in there for a call strike two. Gaspar is a switch hitter batting right. Don Shaw steps up to take the sign. And here's a swing and a drive into the glove of third baseman Coco LaBoy for the out that retires the side and the Mets go one, two, three in the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. At the end of eight full innings of play, the score is Montreal 11, the Mets 6. Now here's a word from Rheingold. Can you imagine a beer without a head? It's like an egg. Through eight innings of play here at Shea Stadium, the Montreal Expos 11 runs, 12 hits, no errors. The Mets, six runs, 11 hits, and three errors. Maury Wells will lead off for Montreal in the top half of the ninth inning, switch hitter batting left against right-hand pitcher Ron Taylor. Taylor's pitch. It's in there for a called strike. Maury Wills has had three hits here today. He is three, four, five. Two doubles, a single. He scored two runs, stolen the base, and batted in one. Taylor's pitch, hammered on the ground. Back to the mound, taken by Taylor. Played to Cleon Jones at first. Wills is out. Gary Sutherland will be the batter. He's gone 0 for 5. He was on on an error by Boswell in the first inning. The Expos have had three home runs, in case you've joined us along the way. Dan McGinn, a pitcher, hit the first one in the fourth. Rusty Staub hit one in the eighth, and Jose LaBoy hit one in the eighth. Swing a ground ball, top to third. Taken there by Charles. Played across to Cleon Jones, in time. Gary Sutherland out by a running stride. Two away, and Rusty Staub is coming up. Staub is two for three and two walks today. He has had two runs batted in. He has scored two. This pitch is low for a ball. This is on the outside corner for a call strike, one and one. Right-hander Jim McAndrew scheduled to go tomorrow for the New York Mets, and right-hander Bill Stoneman, formerly of the Chicago Cubs, is scheduled to be the Expos pitcher. 1-1 one, one delivery, fouled off, out of play. It's 1-2. and two. Tom Seaver started today for the Mets. Worked five innings, was reached for four runs on six hits. He struck out five and walked three, two of them intentionally. Cal Coons followed with two innings in which he gave up three runs on two hits, struck out one and walked four. Coons the pitcher of record just now on the short side. Al Jackson worked a third of an inning, charged with three runs on three hits, struck out one walk, none. Here's a foul ball off the end of the bat. Now Rusty Staub down back at third. One and two to Rusty Staub. President John McHale of the Montreal Expos has just gone down into the Montreal box where he's having a word with
Charlie Bronfman, the chairman of the board, and Mayor Jean Drapeau, who has a smile a yard wide. Here's the pitch outside. It's 2 2. Two men out, nobody on base. Swing and a fly ball down the left field line, curving foul, and it's going into the box seats out of play. Slice down the left field line, so it's 2 2. The bottom half of the ninth inning, the Mets will be sending up Ken Boswell, Cleon Jones, and Ed Charles to face Don Shaw, a former Met who is the pitcher of record on the long side at this point for the Expo. Two two delivery and it's high and away so the count is out full at three two. Don Bosch is on deck. Swinging a foul ball back and out of play. Ron Taylor takes a sign from Jerry Grody, and here is the payoff pitch. Swung on, sliced down the left field line. If it stays fair, it's a foul ball out of play. Saw rounds first and holds up. Well, the Philadelphia Phillies and the Chicago Cubs have really been having at it out there at Wrigley Field this afternoon. The end of eight innings of play. Chicago was leading 5-2, but then the Phils got three runs in the ninth to make it 5-5 and send it into extra innings. Nobody scored in the tenth. The Phils got a run in the eleventh. And now in the bottom of the eleventh, Willie Smith has hit a two-run homer for the Chicago Cubs, and the Cubs win it in 11 innings on Willie Smith's two-run homer. Wonderful Willie Smith wins it for Leo DeRocher's Chicago Cubs by a score of 7-6. Rusty Staub settles himself back into the batter's box now to wait for the three two pitch two men out nobody on base Montreal leading the Mets 11 to 6 we're playing in the top half of the ninth inning that's low it's a walk and Don Bosch is coming up first walk issued by Ron Taylor Don Bosch is a switch hitter batting left former New York Mets Dobb leaves at first base. Taylor's pitch in there for a call strike to Don Bosch. Bosch hit 171 with the Mets last year. But he had three home runs. Outside for a ball. Winning pitcher for the Chicago Cubs in that game at Wrigley Field is the vulture, Phil Reagan. And Barry Lurch is the loser. The attendance at Wrigley Field, 40,796 on this opening day. Ernie Banks had two homers, Don Money had two, and Willie Smith won it with a two-run homer in the 11th. Swinging a foul ball back and out of play. One and two. Bosch waggles the bat. Now Taylor sets up. One two pitch. Low for a ball. Two and two. Bob Bailey is waiting on deck. Rusty Staub takes his lead at first base. This will be a 2-2 delivery to Don Bosch. Fouled off and out of play. Bosch stays alive at 2-2. Now Taylor again peers in for the sign. 
Cobb leads at first base. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. The count holds at 2-2. Crowd of 45,653 on hand here this afternoon at Shea Stadium for the opener. On a beautiful baseball afternoon, and the last time we heard the weatherman, he said we'd have another tomorrow. 2 2 delivery. Swung on and missed by strikes out. The side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. A walk and one left in the middle of the ninth inning. The score is. Montreal 11, the Mets 6. Now here's a word from Rheingold. We thank you. The bottom half of the ninth inning, but before we do, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WJRZ Hackensack, the radio voice of the New York Mets at 97 on your dial. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kanter and Bob Murphy at Shea Stadium in New York. Montreal leads the Mets 11 to 6 in this opening day contest. Ken Boswell up for the Mets. Left-hand batter facing left-hand pitcher Don Shaw. Pitch is in there for a call strike. The Mets came into this afternoon's game never having won an opening day game. Hopeful that this would be the year they could finally break the jinx. That pitch is low for a ball. Last year, the Mets went into the bottom half of the ninth inning against the Giants in San Francisco, leading four to two. But the Giants scored three runs off Danny Priscilla in the bottom half of the ninth inning to win it 5-4. Pitch is low. The Mets did win a home opener last year, the first time they had ever done that. It was Jerry Kuzman and the Mets 3-0 over the San Francisco Giants in the home opener here last year, but it was not the season's opener. A chant of let's go Mets. Two on delivery to Ken Boswell. Swung on and missed. Two and two. Boswell has had two base hits here today. He's two for four. But he has also had three errors to field. The only three errors committed in the ball game have been Boswell. Two two delivery. Swung on and hit on the ground foul back at first base fielded there by Bob Bailey who jogs to the bag but it's a foul ball brings Boswell back with a 2-2 count well it was said that baseball had become a pitcher's game and for that reason the rules committee was trying to restore balance between hitting and pitching it has not been a pitcher's game here this afternoon 11 runs 12 hits for Montreal 6 runs 11 hits for the Mets fouled off and out of play Mudcat Grant, who started from Montreal, lasted an inning and a third. Followed by Dan McGinn, who worked two and a third. Robertson worked one and a third. And then Don Shaw came on and is the pitcher of record. Two-two pitch. Swung on and foul back. Out of play. Count holds it two-two. Shaw steps up to take the sign. Boswell steps back. Now we're ready. 2-2 Two -two delivery. In there for a call. Strike three. And Boswell is a strikeout victim. Third strikeout for Don Shaw. One away for the Mets in the bottom of the ninth. Cleon Jones coming up. Jones is two for four today. Double to drive and a run in the bottom of the fourth. Jones in and waiting. Don Shaw delivers. Jones takes the pitch high. And his hand down the bat and taking the pitch.
Here's a 1-0 delivery. And it's high for ball two to Cleon Jones. Mets batting in the bottom half of the ninth inning and trailing by five runs. This is the first international major league game ever played. At 10 for a call, strike it two and one. Ed Charles waiting on deck. Two on delivery. Swung on and on the ground. Shortstop it's on by for a base hit. By Shepard that plays it back. Leon Jones has his third base hit of the day. He's on it first with one man out, and Ed Charles is coming up. Maury Wills got over, but just could not get over far enough to come up with that ground ball. The base hits are all even in the game now at 12 each. A lot of base hits. Charles is one for four. Pitches in for a call strike. Bob Bailey at first holding against the runner, Cleon Jones. Now he has moved back behind the runner. After all, they have a five-run lead. Expos will not be particularly concerned with the base runner. Now he runs, and the pitch is high on his nose throw, making a stolen base for Cleon Jones. Cleon in there in a cloud of dust. Check the call on the pitch. It was a strike, so it's 0-2. Tom Gorman, the umpire behind the plate. Call it strike two. Bateman did not throw. Now Shaw delivers, and it's outside. One and two to Ed Shaw. Al Weiss is now on deck. Swing and a foul ball off to the right side and out of play. One and two to Ed Charles. It's been a day of frustration for the Mets and the Met fans here at Chase Stadium today. As they have come from behind, they go ahead only to see the lead vanish time and again. Here's a pitch low, it's 2-2. Two -two. Leon Jones takes his lead at second. Left-hander Don Shaw sets up, checks the runner. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Ed Charles. Outside, and it's 3-2. Montreal leading the Mets 11-6 in the bottom half of the ninth inning. And Shaw sets up, offers a payoff pitch. It's outside, and Charles draws a walk. That is the fourth walk issued by Don Shaw, and brings up Al Weiss for his first time today. Last year he was a switch hitter. This year he is an all right hand batter, coming up for his first time in this game. Carol Sambera getting up to throw in the bullpen for Montreal. Pitches in for a call strike to Al White. Carol Sambera is throwing in the bullpen for Montreal. He's a right-hander. Don Shaw checks runners first and second. The pitch is swung on and missed for strike two to Al White. Jerry Grody on deck. This is a two-strike delivery. Swung on and hit in the air to short right field. Digging in his rusty stub. He calls. He's there. He makes the catch. Runners hold. No advance. Two men out. Now Jerry Grody comes up. Jerry is one for two and two walks today.
in the on deck circle now. Duffy Dyer has moved out there. Duffy Dyer is on deck, hopeful that Jerry Grody will keep this game alive. There are two men out, two men on in the bottom half of the night. Montreal leading 11 to 6. Grody shortens up in taking the pitch. It's low for ball one. Jones at second base, Charles at first. Don Shaw again checks the runners. The 1-0 pitch inside and low to Grody. Simbera continues to throw in the bullpen. Now again, Don Shaw sets up. 2-0 offering in there for a call strike to Grody. It's two and one. Eleven runs, twelve hits for Montreal. Six runs, twelve hits for the New York Mets. Two-one pitch. This is low and away, so it's out to three balls and one strike. Brody twisting that bat in his hand now back in there waggles it and waits. Don Shaw offers 3-1 and it's on the outside corner for a call strike two. So the string is out it's three and two. Med runners on the bases will be going on the pitch. The two men out in the bottom half of the ninth inning Montreal is leading 11 to six. Duffy Dyer on deck. Runners lead, there they go, and here's the pitch swung on and fouled off. Into the dugout of the Montreal Expos. So runners return, they'll have to do it all over again. Grody went over to get a little pine tar, and he's ready to go to work again. In there and waiting as Don Shaw reads Bateman's sign. Met runners lead first and second, and there they go. 3 2 pitch. Swung on line into left center field. A base hit. Leon Jones comes on to score. Going to third is Ed Charles. Jones scores standing up. The throw comes in. Holding it first is Grody with a single to left to run batted in. Duffy Dyer bats for Ron Taylor. Duffy Dyer batting for Ron Taylor. It's 11 to 7. Mets have 13 hits. Duffy Dyer is a right hand batter. He is capable of hitting the long ball. Here's Dyer's pitch, and it is high and away. Ball one. Shaw's pitch to Dyer. High and away for ball one. Ed Charles, the runner at third. Jerry Grody, the runner at first. This is Shaw's fourth inning of work and relief. That's in there for a call strike. It's one and one. The only pitcher in this game today who's worked longer than Shaw is Tom Seaver, who worked five for the Mets. A struggling five. He went out on the long end of the score, but saw that lead vanish. Cal Kuntz is the pitcher of record. Head runners lead at first and third. Here's a 1-1 pitch, but first an attempt to get Grody. Bailey was not curving, and he takes the toss in behind the bag and up the right field line a step or two. Duffy Dyer steps out with a 1-1 count. Here's a swing and a drive deep to left field. It's way back there. Going, going, and this is gone. A home run for Duffy Dyer. A three-run homer. Montreal 11, the Mets 10. Duffy Dyer, a three-run homer into the bullpen. The Mets trail by a single run.
is Eugene Marcus coming out of the Montreal dugout and headed for the mound. It's Montreal 11, the Mets 10. Don Shaw with his back to the plate looking out at that scoreboard. The time is gone for Carol Simbera. Carol Simbera will be brought in. We're going to get a pitching change. As the Mets have pulled it within one run here in the bottom half of the ninth inning, the Mets fans, deeply dejected, are suddenly alive once again here at Shea Stadium. The Mets have rallied. For four runs in the bottom half of the ninth inning. So Shaw pitched three and two-thirds. And has been charged with four runs on three hits. Until this inning, he had not given up a hit. He struck out three and walked four. Carol Simbera coming in. And Floyd Wicker is going in to play left field. Floyd Wicker is going in to play left field. That will enable manager Gene Mock to get his pitcher back down to the number nine spot in the batting order. Shaw is walking toward the dugout. Sambara taking his warm-up pitches now. Sambara was at Oklahoma City last year with a record of 11 and 10, formerly with the Houston Astros. He had an earned run average at Oklahoma City of 4.22. The Mets will have Amos Otis up here. We have Tommy Agee on deck, but there are two men out. There's nobody on base, and Montreal is leading 11 to 10. A wild international opener at Shea Stadium. Mets and the Expos will be here again tomorrow and again Thursday. Mets have 10 runs on 14 hits. The homer by Duffy Dyer, the first Met homer of this season. Wicker went out into left field, loosened up his arm, and now Ty Klein is back out there. So Wicker was just loosening up his arm. Ty Klein is back out in left field, so leave it Ty Klein. Amos Otis up now. Right-hand pitcher to a right-hand batter. And it's in there for a call strike to Otis. The Mets are down by a run in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Again, Carol Sembera. Swung on and hit on the ground up the third base on a swinging roller. It's going to go for a base hit. Otis is on. The Mets have the tying run on base, and Tommy Agee is coming up. That was a swinging roller up the third baseline. There was no play on the ball, and Otis sped across first base safely. Tug McGraw is throwing in the Met bullpen. Left-hander Tug McGraw warming up in the Met bullpen. Larry Jaster is throwing in the bullpen for Montreal. Now A.G. is up. Pitches outside for a ball. Tommy A.G. is two for four on a walk. Manager Gene Mark has gone to one of his ace starters, Larry Jaster, warming him up in the bullpen. He's got Carol Simbera out there on the mound, pitching to the Mets, Tommy Agee. His pitch is low, it's 2-0. and oh. Time is called as Bateman walks out to have a word with Carol Simbera. 
The Mets making a late bid here in the bottom half of the ninth inning, having already scored four runs in the bottom of the ninth. Bateman now walks back to reassume his position behind the plate. Amos Otis, the runner at first, being held on there now by Bob Bailey. This pitch is inside. It's ball three. Rod Gaspar is on deck. Gaspar is on deck as the count to AG. has gone three balls and no strikes. A walk would push the tying run into scoring position at second base. It would put the go-ahead run on at first base. Here's a 3-0 delivery. Low, and it's a walk to AG. So the Mets have the tying run at second. The winning run at first. Rod Gaspar coming up. This young man playing his first major league game is two for four on a walk, and what a spot to be at. Umpire Tom Gorman doing a little groundskeeping for the moment. These Met fans have really gone wild here, as they have seen. The New Yorkers score four runs in the bottom of the ninth. They have runners at first and second with two men out. Now Rod Gaspar, a switch hitter, will be batting left against Carol Simbera, a right-hand pitcher. Gaspar with an open stance, in there and waiting. Runners lead. Here's the pitch. It's in there for a call strike to Gaspar. Ken Boswell is on deck. Left-hander Larry Jaster working in the bullpen. Gene Mock moves up on the steps to see if he's ready. Now again, Met runners lead. Sim Barry checks him over his shoulder. Here's the strike one pitch. Swung on and missed. It's strike two. Sembera is the fifth pitcher to be used in this ball game by Montreal. The Mets have used four. Rod Gaspar settles himself back in now. The count to him has gone to two strikes. Runners lead at first and second. Two strike delivery. Swung on and missed, and the ball game is over. Gaspar is a strikeout victim. The Montreal Expos have won it by a score of 11 to 10. Sembera being swamped by the Expos who come out of their dugout as the New York Mets made a gallant bid in the bottom half of the ninth inning but could not pull it off as they fell one run shy with the tying run and the winning run on base when the ball game came to an end. So the New York Mets still have never won an opener. This is the eighth consecutive year in which they have made a bid to win the opener and the eighth consecutive year in which they failed to bring it up. This was a wild and woolly baseball game. They said that last year was a pitcher season, that the game was heavily in favor of pitchers. This was not a pitcher's ball game out here this afternoon. This was a day for the men with the bat. As Tom Seaver started for the Mets, but the Expos got two runs in the top half of the first inning. But the Mets came back to get three in the bottom half of the second and go ahead. Montreal got another in the third to tie it. And then Montreal got another in the fourth to go ahead, but the Mets got three in the bottom of the fourth and led six to four. The end of five innings, Tom Seaver came out of the ballgame. Cal Kuntz came in for the New York Mets. The go-ahead run was scored at that point by the Montreal Expos in the seventh when with two men out, Don Shaw, who had come on in relief for Montreal, walked. Ty Klein walked, and Maury Wills singled to drive in the go-ahead run. A big three-run homer by Coco Lavoie in the eighth inning. Further... Enhanced the catches the Montreal Expos as has put them five runs out in front. That was hit off Ron Taylor who had relieved Cal Kuntz. So it seemed at that point that Montreal was safely home. They led by five runs, but the Mets rallied in the bottom half of the ninth inning with a big three run homer by young Duffy Dyer, the big hit in the inning. And they pulled within one run, but could not put it off and Montreal won it 11 to 10. As the winning pitcher in the ball game is a former New York Met, Don Shaw. And the losing pitcher is relief pitcher Cal Kunt. We'll be back with more about the New York Mets in just a moment. You know, a Mets game at Shea Stadium is a great place to have your next outing. Tick the ticket sellers will help you select the best seats available, whether it's for 40 people or 4,000. And if you're planning a pregame luncheon or buffet, why don't you take advantage of the beautiful restaurant facilities here at Shea? which are available for those purposes. 
Additional information may be obtained by calling or writing the ticket manager here at Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip code 11368. Or if you'd like to phone, the telephone number is 672-3000. 672-3000. So plan an outing for your group to see a Mets home game here at Shea Stadium and to make all your plans for luncheon, dinner, the ball game and whatnot, call ticket manager Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip code 11368. In the first international Major League Baseball game ever played, the Expos, in the first game they have ever played, have defeated the Mets by a score of 11 to 10. Here are the final totals. For Montreal, 11 runs on 12 hits and no errors. For the Mets, 10 runs on 15 hits and 3 errors. Don Shaw is the winner. Cal Kuntz is the loser. For the Mets, Cleon Jones had 3 hits today. Gaspar had 2. Tommy Agee had 2. The only home run was that by Duffy Dyer that came in the ninth inning. For the Montreal Expos, Maury Wills had three base hits. Rusty Staub had two, and he walked three times. Mac Jones had a pair of doubles. Jose Laboy had a home run, so did Rusty Staub. And Dan McGinn had the first Expo home run ever. But once again, the final score is Montreal 11, the Mets 10. New York Mets baseball has been brought to you by Rheingold Extra Dry. The beer with the 10-minute head. Haven't you timed it yet? Today's game was also brought to you by Sitco. If you want the best products and services, Sitco is a nice place to visit. By Household Finance. Remember, if you need money for any worthwhile purpose, see the folks at HFC, America's oldest and largest consumer finance company. And by Royal Crown Cola. Check the one that's moving up fast all over the country. RC, the cola with the mad, mad taste. Be with us tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. as the Mets again meet the Montreal Expos here at Shea Stadium in New York. Our engineers, Bob Horvath and Jerry Brooks. Our statistician, Art Friedman. Our producer, Bob Andrus. Executive producer, Philip Winston. Final score once again, Montreal 11, the Mets 10. So until tomorrow afternoon, speaking for Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner, this is Lindsey Nelson saying so long. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Science discovers a new source of life. Listen. Duracell, the power cell that's still going strong long after ordinary batteries are dead. An ordinary battery could be dying even as you listen. The difference is that Duracell batteries can flash hundreds of flash bulbs, drive thousands of extra feet of movie film, keep transistor radios, flashlights, toys, clocks, all going far longer than ordinary batteries. Listen, a new source of life, Duracell. The long distance power cell, Duracell. Still going strong long after ordinary batteries are dead. Duracell, made by Mallory. Insist on Duracell, the long distance power cell that outlasts any ordinary battery. Duracell, made by Mallory. This is WJRZ Hackensack, voice of the New York Mets. Hello, everybody. We're back here at Shea Stadium where we saw the most improbable ball game. And uh, this is the kind, I suppose, that people are going to be talking about for a long, long time to come. I suppose Commissioner Kuhn, who might be listening to the broadcast this afternoon, got some satisfaction. Uh, all the talk last year was uh, get more action, get more runs. And you'll recall one of the games this spring, the Mets experimented in a game with the Detroit Tigers with a livelier ball. Get more action and get more runs. Well, there was no way they could pack more action and more runs into today's improbable ball game. The scoreboard show today is brought to you by Benjamin Rubenstein Opticians, the opticians who make you look better when they make you see better. So the Montreal Expos and the fans of this new Montreal team 
We'll never know, ever, ever, if baseball thrives for another hundred years, the fans of Montreal will never know the frustration of Met fans, who will just simply have to wait until next year. There's no other way. Wait until next year. For seven years, the Mets have been waiting to win an opening day, and we're very confident through, oh, four innings of this one with Tom Seaver going, and the Mets two runs ahead. And then it got touchy after that, and got very wild, and ended on a typical Met ninth inning, one run short rally, and losing 11 to 10 this afternoon. 11 to 10. Let's go quickly to the scoreboard. They had 36,000 up at Baltimore this afternoon for the opening, and the Orioles fans were frustrated too, as the Red Sox beat the Baltimore Orioles five to four. For Boston, five runs, 11 hits, and one error, and Baltimore, four runs, six hits, and one error. Home runs from Mark Belanger, Tony Canigliaro in the tenth with one on, and Frank Robinson in the tenth with one aboard. The winner is uh, Bill Landis in relief. He was the fourth of six pitchers used by the Red Sox. And the loser is Mike Adamson, who was the sixth pitcher used by Earl Weaver's Baltimore Orioles. Five to four, Boston over Baltimore. At Detroit, Denny McClain, the 31-game winner, pitched a three-hitter and beat the Cleveland Indians six to two. Tigers at 11 hits. Made one error, the Indians three hits and no error. 6 2 Detroit. Larry Brown homered for Cleveland in the first and the K line for Detroit in the fifth with one on. Louis Tiomp, the loser for the Indians. Jack Hamilton and Horacio Pena also working for Cleveland. They had 53,572 up at Detroit. 53,000 for an opener. Tigers win at 6 2. At the end of eight at Kansas City, the New Royals and the Minnesota Twins are tied three apiece. Craig Nettles, the only home run in the ballgame for the Twins in the second, nobody off. Bunker, Bergmeier, and Landis. And for Minnesota, Tom Hall, Miller, and Ron Peronofsky. Peronofsky and Bergmeier are the pitchers of record. It's a 3-3 ball game. Now, wouldn't it be something since Montreal won out here this afternoon? Kansas City in a real struggle with Minnesota. San Diego is scheduled to play uh, Houston tonight. And uh, wouldn't it be something if all Seattle is scheduled to play the Cal Angels later tonight? If all the expansion teams were to win on opening day, wouldn't that be a something? Well, sir. Okay, we had uh, three games the American League, one still on finish. Hope to have a final for you. Seattle at California tonight. Chicago playing at Oakland tonight. The National League at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Another wild one with the Cubs beating the Phillies 7 to 6. With Willie Smith homering in the 11th inning to win it for Chicago. Banks had two home runs for the Cubs earlier. Don Money had two for the Phillies earlier. And the winner, Willie Smith homering in the 11th. 7 to 6. Chicago over Philadelphia. Tonight, Pittsburgh, uh, the winner over there was Bill Regan in relief of Ferguson Jenkins. And the loser was Barry Lursch, the third Philly pitcher. And they had 40,000 at Chicago. Pittsburgh at St. Louis, the Giants at Atlanta, Houston, and San Diego. Now a word from our good friends, Benjamin Rubenstein. Benjamin Rubenstein Opticians, they're on Route 4 just between the Garden State Plaza and the Bergen Mall right next door to Artcraft Furniture, and they certainly have all of the supplies to satisfy whatever needs you have in the way of uh, glasses. Certainly, if you wear glasses, one pair just isn't enough. You live in the fear that something's going to happen to that one pair of glasses, and then what will you do?